everyone, and welcome to Film Geek Time Machine. Hi, Austin. <laughs> I'm your host, Austin Kennedy. Hi, hi. Tim. Oh, hi. I'm Tim. <laughs> and this is the podcast oh, I where... Thought, I thought you were talking to me. So. Oh, <laughs> This is the podcast where I have a time machine, and I'm a film geek, so what does a film geek do with a time machine? Travel back in time and watch movies. So we pick a random date. We picked June 12th, 1984, and we look up the newspaper, and then we look at what uh, we would see, or what we are going to see, in real time. So we're going to, like, at 12 o'clock, we pick this movie, 2 o'clock, we pick this movie, and then we kind of pick them together. So the movies that we didn't pick, so I'm going to look at the newspaper right now. Here we are. So the, this is what was out besides the movies that we picked. So huge movies, Gremlins, Ghostbusters, Indiana Temple, Jones and the Temple, Temple of, Doom. of Doom. Yeah, that was out. Um, the Natural was also out. Uh, um, Footloose was out. I can tell you Footloose was out. Because we watched Footloose. <laughs> was out. Okay. Star Trek Three: Search that for was, Spock. That was... That was that was also that was, uh, Police Academy was still out. Splash was out in some theaters. Um, yeah, eighty four was a fucking it was, banger. It was okay. a, a summer of eighty four was pretty cool. And one movie that was out that I would do want to talk about that we chose not chose on purpose was Once Upon a Time in America. Sergio Leone's yes epic gangster film. And and by all means, I would love absolutely love to talk about this movie, but. I refused to see the watch the theatrical cut because it was taken away from Sergio Leone and they yeah. cut like over an hour out of that movie. Yeah, because it's not, about it's a four hour movie, but they, it's, it's it's not in the theater. It ain't. No, it's like <laughs> it's like just over two hours or like yeah. almost two and a half hours. They cut like ninety minutes out of it, and you've never have seen. You, have it. you never seen the theatrical cut? No, because it was never really you, available. You, Austin Kennedy. You're a movie historian. I am. Okay? Well, the thing is, so it's not readily... <laughs> now, granted, I didn't want to watch it either. No. It's probably the shittiest version. It's not ready <laughs> available, because even when it came out on its home release, it was they already released it in its big... Austin, Austin big one. we're traveling through time. Oh, it's that's right. It's available to us. Okay. <laughs> I don't. I definitely don't want to see it. So, And especially if it's your first time seeing it, I don't want that to be your first yeah, time seeing it. Yeah, that's fine. So. So that's why I didn't want to do it. But anyways, that's why we're not t- talking about... Uh, well, I really wanted to watch Firestarter. Probably, <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> okay, so the movies that we did pick, um, and we again, we were all kind of choosing together. So the first movie we picked is Moscow and the Hudson with Robin Williams. Now, I've never seen this movie. I remember watch because I always watched Cisco and Ebert when I was a kid. So I was seven, when uh, almost eight, when this came out. You, you were, were watching Cisco and Ebert when you were seven? I was really in the movies and already. And you got laid in your, in your teenage years? <laughs> I did, I did. I don't understand you, Austin. <laughs> you don't make no sense to me. So, <laughs> so um, but yeah, I was watching Cisco and Ebert, and I do remember specifically, um, in fact, the scene that I remember is like his head being on their Maria Cachita Alonso's uh, dress. I remember seeing that. Oh, in I'll the, be talking about that. I remember seeing that in the thing. I'll be talking about thing. Oh, plenty of stuff in this movie because I watched this movie. In the second movie, <laughs> Street, Streets of Fire, which I know Tim didn't see, which is why I'm like, well, we're watching it because I, I want Tim to watch it. I, I, I'd only ever seen two of these movies. Yeah. So yeah. And I've, I've seen three of them. So Firestarter, which you've seen, and I've never seen Firestarter. Yeah, that so that's why be, I picked it. That, is that the first time that's happened? Maybe, maybe, maybe. But I, I've never seen it. And uh, every time I tell someone I haven't seen Firestarter, I'm like, what? You're a film geek? And I'm like, well... In the early eighties, you know, I was a young kid, and a lot of people's ins were horror films. I did not like horror movies. I did not okay. like being scared, and well, so I Fire stayed Star away from would that fight, stuff. It's not really a horror movie. No, not really. But <laughs> at the time, there, I mean, it was marketed as a horror. Film. Yeah, it's a Stephen King film, right? And at this Which they point, would say it. I don't think they told anybody "Stand by Me" was the most even. Oh, thing not really. No, because, no, no, uh, no. People, people won't go. They'll think it's scary. Yeah, and it's only kind of scary. And then the <laughs> uh, the other three movies we picked. Um, Three dance movies in a row. We got Beat Street. We got uh, Footloose. And then we went to the drive-in to see Footloose and Break in Double Features. Not so. Break in Two. No memes. No memes. Okay, it's, no memes. It's just the, just the OG. OG Break in. But the OG has to exist for the memes to exist. Okay? <laughs> That's true. That's true. You could meme this movie, though. <laughs> oh, no. This movie's actually probably been memed to high heaven, too. They could just lie and say so it's was the movies, And one. again, this is June 12th, 1984, and the music that was out, I mean, this is like the heyday of music, because I was also okay, really into music All time yeah. is the heyday of music, you old fucking codger. No, but okay. this is, there's some really I mean, good stuff I'm, in here. Granted, I'm the target audience yeah, yeah, yeah. for this music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was 15 yeah. when we, at this time. And, I, and at this time, I was already, listen, I was heavily into music, too, in the soul. Time After Time was the number one Cindy Lauper yes. um, in, good, in the time. Good song. The Reflex, Duran Duran. Amazing song. Great. Um, let's hear it for the body. I don't know if I let's remember that song. Let's hear it for the boy. Let's hear it for oh the body. Oh my God. Why did I see? I, it You're looked a like it said body. Oh, so that's. So how many songs from Footloose are on here? That's Let's Hear It uh, for the Boy. That is two. And then Almost, Almost Paradise. Paradise. 
And then you said you saw that other one too, the uh, Dancing in the Sheets. Okay, there it, it is. is. Yeah. Yes. Also, a song from Breakin was number. But granted, 40. maybe I'm wrong. I'm assuming I think that was in Footloose. Oh, okay. but we did just watch like five movies with a bunch of songs. Like, <laughs> right, right, all right. a in my head. Yeah, okay? but, but Breakin, there's no stopping us. That's also in the top. So that's actually yes. that was a popular song. It's the 40th though. It's, yeah, well, it's it's, the, it's, it's a in failure, there. Austin Kennedy. It's in there. <laughs> it, it made it in. But Lionel Richie, hello, Dancing in the Dark, Bruce Springsteen, Jump for My Love, Pointer Sisters. It's all oh, self control is a great song. Laura, Laura Brennigan. Oh yes, Heart uh-huh. of Rock and Roll. Sister Christian. Heart of Rock and Roll is number six, huh? Oh, Sherry. Okay. With Steve, what, what? Pa- Steve oh, Perry. See. That number there is what it was last Eyes week. Eyes Without that a Face. Confusing me. This, like I said, this is me. Yeah. I'm is... not going to like listen to the. If I were to just listen. If I traveled through time to 1984 in some fashion <laughs> and turned on the radio, I'd go like, I like all these songs. Okay. Yeah. So that's, that's the time that we were in. Moscow on the Hudson is the first movie, so I've never seen this movie. It's directed by, uh, written and directed by Paul Mazursky. Paul Mazursky was pretty uh, prominent filmmaker in the seventies. Um, his first movie was a pretty big cult smash. Was uh, Bob and Carol and Ted and Alice? Yes. Um, okay, that which, was him. Okay, which I've never seen. I've seen. Oh well, sometime we'll watch that. Yeah. I, have I, you seen it? You know something? I'm an old man. I might have seen that, but. I've been watching movies for longer. Than so you, okay, I've seen Actually, uh, maybe not because somehow you started when you were a fucking fetus. Okay? Oh, I was. Oh, I was really <laughs> in movies right away. Um, so Blue Bloom and Love. I, I, I seen that in se- 1973. You and didn't see that in 1973. No, no, no. Yeah. But oh, wait, I, we did travel to 1970. No, no, no. 72. You, you did watch a bunch of 1973 movies. That's right. I did. I did a, a, a right. podcast, and you guessed on there too. Yeah, yeah. Um. So, anyways, uh, Bloom and Love. Oh my God! You would be, you would scream at that movie so much. You would scream. I don't want to watch it. More, Except for... I think even more than played against Sam, you would scream at that movie. What? Yes, I'll tell you I, later. I, I don't know if that's humanly possible. Oh, you would scream at that movie. But I actually, I actually really like the movie, but it is very problematic. And then, um, Harry and Tonto, which uh, Art Carney won uh, best uh, best actor for oh, nineteen seventy four. Oh, Art Carney, why why did you bring in, him up? Weird. He's gonna be in. I wonder if he's one of these movies. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so he was kind of a prominent filmmaker at the, at this time. And uh, so he made this movie, Moscow on the Hudson, and he makes movies, he makes comedies, but they're not like, you know, not like Mel Brooks comedies or anything like that. They're dramedies, dramedies. Yes, you know? there's like, some they're, legit they're... funny stuff that happens in this Moscow on the Hudson, but it's kind of low key-ish and it is kind of... But the story's grounded the in drama. Yeah. And it's just how the characters react to things where the comedy is from. It's not jokes. Yes. And that's and that's although and that's, very possibly what I think was the best joke happens kind of early. When they're practicing their English. Oh. And he's and one of, and he says, Have you do you read Ernest Hemingway? Every fucking day. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was actually pretty funny. Okay. So Robin Williams plays and this was his like fourth or fifth starring role. And so I think first was really okay. Well, Popeye, Popeye, World According to Garp, oh God. then Survivors, and then this. I think weird. So because I think people we all talk about how his breakout role was uh, Good Morning Vietnam. Good Morning Vietnam. Yeah, but he was already like yeah. the headliner in this movie. He was, and well, because also don't forget, Mark right, and Mindy was huge. Mark and movie. Mindy was. Mick and Mindy was huge. Yeah, yeah. Was it not at this point? And reruns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It had been canceled. It was I early think. '80s, right? Yeah. It's 84. 84. I think it started in like 78 and it went to like 82. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, yeah, that sounds about right. Anyways, so this movie, he plays a um, a Russian who want, who um, ends up def- defecting um, yes. to America. And um, then it's just kind of showing how he gets into the life or tries to adapt to the lifestyle. And he meets uh, Maria Kachita Alonso, who's yeah. uh, a department store worker. Mm-hmm. And he mm-hmm. defected like, at that department store. I, I'd like her. She's awesome. So I'll, I'll no, I mean, I'm just, her. she's hot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but she's, I love Marie. No, she's Chiquita. not bad or anything. No, she's it was true. funny because, oh, so every time we would see a movie, like, and she was in the trailer, like, she was in the trailer for Predator 2. She's in Predator 2. And they're naming all the names. And no, they, I'm sorry. Are you saying she's in Predator also? Predator or? Part 2. Okay. <laughs> and, and, and they, you know, they're like, Danny Glover, Bill Paxton, Maria Kachita Alonso, my brother's like, I bless you. Every time, so she he says bless you, yeah, because as a joke, yes, because it's like sounds like somebody sneezed. Yeah, bring it to Alonso. I don't know. Okay. That's what he always I mean, said. Okay. Anyway, I met your brother. <laughs> sure, um, makes sense. So yeah, but then then they form a relationship, and then he also has a friend too, um, a security guard at the at Bloomingdale's where he defects, and he's yes. like, hey, why don't you come stay with me, man? <laughs> like, yes, that was pretty funny. But anyways, 
in a nutshell, that's what the movie is. So now we can go kind of more okay. into detail. What we're okay. Talking. Yeah. This is not typically what I do in this show. Yeah. But we're going to talk about fucking movie making right now. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. This movie, the first thing you see is a. On the bus. Is on the bus. He is already in New York. Yeah. You find out at this point from his accent and the other guy's yeah, yeah, accent yeah. that they're both Russian. Yeah. Then it flashes back to Moscow. Yeah. I hated it. I don't hate this movie. I hated that part really? where I'm like, here's what I want this movie to be. Because here's what huh. would have been cooler. I his actually, friend, okay. his friend actively talks about defecting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He actually, for the first, oh, third of the movie when they're like in Moscow, yeah. he's trying to like convince his friend that it's a bad idea. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And stuff like that. But at this point, we already fucking know his friend's probably not going to defect. We know he's going to defect. Oh. Here's what it should be. We shouldn't fucking know that. Oh, so it shouldn't have that first flashback. Part. It should. That's okay. what I'm saying. Okay. It, that okay. tells us. Okay. It's what I would call a fucking spoiler. Okay. 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 Yeah. And yeah. So I'm like, but I already know. I'm literally just sitting here. I'm like, but I already know. Yeah. I'm literally waiting for the thing I know is going to happen to happen. That didn't bother me it, at all. It always, <laughs> that's the shit. Okay. It's, it's the flash. It's the giant flash. The whole movie's a big flashback. But I also want to. Always. It, it sometimes is. bothers it me. Sometimes so it works, I do, but, most of the time but I do want to say this though, because you're talking about filmmaking in that scene. That scene is actually really well made. So it actually starts. I'm no, gonna hold on. Yes. This so it the starts other with kind the, of filmmaking. So it starts <laughs> I'm about writing. Okay, it starts. Yes. Yeah, okay. There you go. So it starts with well, the direction wise. The camera starts with you see this guy get on the bus, and then it like it follows him. It dollies over, and then it sits. It's a one shot. Oh, I would say scene. the whole movie is well made. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a one shot, and then shot. and then they sit. And they and they're talking, and then he's like, you realize that they're both foreigners, and he's like, um, they're Robin both Williams, foreigners. Robin Williams is giving him advice Thanks, about bro. where to go, <laughs> <laughs> and and so they're giving, he's giving him advice, and and then it kind of like shows him. He's like, yeah, New York is not so, you know, it's not nice to foreigners sometimes, and it's hard. Yes. And then it like, well, he, like, he stares off. Directions. He stares off, kind of like you know, yeah. contemplating or thinking, and then it kind of pushes into him. That's all in one shot. Then I also, I like the transition to Moscow because he's on the bus in New York. And, no, all, the, no, and all of a sudden it jumps cut and I, he's on a bus in Russia. Yes, that was that, cool. That was cool. Yeah. I, I will admit, the way they, they made the movie yeah, yeah, is yeah. good. Okay. What, I, what, what I'm mostly saying is when he defects, yeah. it's no surprise. No. And no. I wanted, I'm like, boy, would this be cool. For a while at least, you think. If you don't even know yeah. about anything, although it's called Moscow and Hudson, you're like, okay, I'm assuming he's going to New York or something. Okay? Yeah. And they, but when they're talking about, like, when his friend is talking about defecting yeah. and stuff, what I'm thinking is, at that point, you might very well, pe- if you hadn't didn't have that beginning, right. you could be going, is this movie going to be, his friend is, he, there's going to be a lot of discussion about whether his friend should defect while yeah. they're running around in New York. Mm-hmm. That would have been actually fascinating to me and then suddenly there's a big twist where he defects. actually defects yeah, yeah, yeah and his friend is still on the bus yeah and like waving yeah and you never fucking see that guy again <laughs> that could have been phenomenal yeah because what i'm gonna say is this movie is really good yeah it could have been fucking okay. amazing okay. yeah it could have been yeah mind-blowing when you okay because I'm watching and I'm game. like, I'm literally just like, when's he going to defect? I yeah. know he's fucking defecting. And it, it's, just, it's literally like, he defects almost an hour into the movie. Yeah. It's almost yeah. an hour. And there's a the first, yeah. the first 30 or 40 minutes is in Russia. Yeah. And what I think. And then was, it like just cuts to their New York because they're talking about going to yeah, yeah. Running, what I thought was really, New York. What I thought was really uh, brave though of this movie in a, in a studio movie is the first. 30, 40 minutes is in Russian. Like they're speaking yes. in Russian with subtitles. Yes. Yeah. It, it could have been very easy to be like, oh, let's just have them talk in Russian accents. No, granted, and stuff. I'm watching and I'm like, I know 90% of the people I'm watching, I'm like, well, that's an American guy. That's an American guy. So yeah, I, yeah, I, I also yeah, was yeah, thinking, yeah. like, okay, I don't know Russian. Yeah. Do Russians watch this and go, like, those fucking quote unquote Russians yeah, all yeah, have yeah, yeah, yeah. terrible American accents? Um, I don't know. I can't tell. But so, it does, it makes me think, that's all. But, it, but it's kind of <laughs> neat to see, you know, um, uh, the beginning stuff, you know, establishing the characters. I think they did a really good job establishing Rob Williams' character. And then when he defects, it's a really great scene with in Bloomingdale's. Oh, yeah. And it, the people are chasing him around. Great. It's and, great. And it's funny, but it's also serious at the same time. Him and his friend yeah. that he ends up 
like living with. Because they work at a they're circus. Kind of antagonistic. He's a saxophonist for a circus. Yeah, and they're kind of antagonistic well. until yeah. the defection. Yeah. And then his friends goes like, well, uh, he wants to defect and I'm going to let him. Yeah. Because yeah. Vladimir is his He name, said yeah. the word defect and that's all I fucking care about. Yeah. Okay. And the FBI shows up and says, he said the word defect. Well, we're going to let him maybe defect. We're gonna judge him later. There's okay. a great, there's a great joke though, where, where he's just like, "I'm gonna defect not in the Bloomingdale's or not. You yeah, go to the yeah, bathroom. Go, the bathroom's over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I that was it's pretty one funny. of those little things in the movie where there's like this little. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I forgot. Sometimes jokes happen. Yeah, okay? and then he meets. Uh, he the only way he makes like one Robin Williamsy joke with the bag where he says a big prophylactic and i'm like you fucking shut up but it was in but it was in russian it's yeah i know but so, i'm yeah, like yeah, 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 yeah. Fucking Robin Williams that was Robin Williams, okay. but <laughs> Robin Williams he was thing. pretty reined in so i okay yeah, yeah he was uh, pretty, something he, this. he's great in the movie yeah we're gonna talk about his performance so you know people were like oh good morning vietnam is a big breakthrough this is an, i think it's oscar worthy performance oh no he is really good he it's not robin williams Improving for the whole movie, yeah, because he did. He even improved in Good Morning Vietnam, but it's still a great movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he is playing a character doing a very convincing Russian accent, and he speaks to Russian. Us, like to I us. said, yeah, I yeah, have, yeah. That's all that matters. No, because Russians aren't watching this fucking well, movie. Not in '84, they are. Well, what's for interesting? Sure. Well, because it's very easily he easily could have overdone it, so it could have been to the point of parody. It, it's, yeah, not. it's not. It's no, not. No, it's not. No, they it's all good. speak Russian, and I'm like. That all sounds legit, like super <laughs> Russian. Okay, yeah, super no, Russian-y. I thought it was really good. And then, um, you know, obviously the problematic part where he's on his knees and he's trying to hide, and he hides. Yes, in. It's, but, a, it's a joke, I but guess. But and she's like having fun down there and stuff. But yeah. but it doesn't. It doesn't. At least to me, it didn't come across that like that creepy. It was just yes. kind of. It was almost charming in a way. The after he defects, this movie is fucking phenomenal. Yeah, because. It's all about him learning. Trying to acclimate and himself. sad because he's literally never going to see any of his family. Yeah. And he had a girlfriend in in Moscow. Yeah. Never going to see her again. Yeah. But granted, literally the first attractive woman he sees is, is like, <laughs> his partner for life. Yeah, okay? yeah, yeah. I'm like, very... oh, yeah, that works. He was there for 20 minutes, and now he's going to get married, basically. Well, okay? and, and I liked, <laughs> and I liked uh, their relationship. It felt like a real... Yes, relationship. It, 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 it does. I kind of wish. I actually, kind of wish they didn't get back together. In oh, the end. at the end, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. like, uh, I kind of hate when that shit happens. Cause but because he, he's actually, he kind of treats her shitty for a while. Yeah, because he's like really handsy and gropy, and she's like, uh, but no, she did say I, that she did say she just wants sex though. She yeah, did I know. Say that. But then she wants to. Obviously, he wants to move it past that. And she we didn't all know though. that she didn't though. Well, she said she didn't, but then she still like tries to open up with him on occasion. Right. And then he just gets handy and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she wants to like she's she's also not American. She's Italian. Okay. Though she's not. She's Cuban. <laughs> she's she's yeah, Cuban yeah. in real life, but she's Italian <laughs> in the movie. Everybody's using the wrong accent yeah, yeah, in this yeah, fucking yeah. movie. Okay. And I love oh, um I also love the black family that he goes stays with, like that. Oh, that, they're, all that they're stuff awesome. is hilarious. And they like they're funny. Fully, they, the they, grandfather, they, their their kid, literally brings a, str- a Russian stranger home, and they're fully accepting. <laughs> and I'm like, um, he didn't like tell you because there's this not a time where he could have texted you. By the way, yeah. Harry, Russian guy, not just Harry, Harriest human being in the world. Well, that's Rob Williams. Coming. He's yes. always been like, he's gonna come. Okay, and there's, so and to go to a different movie in the movie Hook. There's a scene where he has a shirt off. He is completely shaved because he has no hair on his oh, body. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he has to be. And they had to shave him 20 minutes earlier because it was all coming back, baby. Okay? But so, yeah, Ron Williams is great. Maria Cachita Alonso is, and I want to talk about her as an actress. I've always liked her in every movie I see her in. She's and great. she kind of disappeared after 1990, 91. Yeah, that's weird. And, and it's too bad because she was kind of everywhere. She was in the movie Colors with Sean Penn and Robert Duvall. She was in Running Man with Arnold Schwarzenegger. She's the girl in the movie that, you know, um, side by side. She's in Vampire's Kiss with Nicolas Cage. I mean, yeah, it's weird. Predator so, 2, she's all over the place. She as is much so as good. like kind of shit on the way some of their dynamic works, yeah, yeah, yeah. they actually have an amazing chemistry in this yeah, movie. Yeah, I think so and too. And the scene in the tub oh my God. is so fucking like, how did I not know this? This should be the most nominated scene in the It was movie really good. So it's there's so a scene where, where they're just. It's, they're just granted, it also is just like. He's got the odds for it. I'm like, yeah, he's got naked mirrors. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right well, what's, what's what I like about this movie, and Paul Mazursky <laughs> kind of does this with his films, that he doesn't glamorize nudity or sex. No, no. It's just there it is. There's nudity because there's nudity in everyday life. And I like that he just I've portrays never been it naked, that way. Austin. <laughs> so, like, the scene of the tub where he's, you know, he's. 
she's like laying like on top of him or whatever. Yeah, you know? and, and they're she's trying to do some studying. Yeah, yeah. it's really working. Okay. And, and but she's naked, but it's just so you know, and and you know, there isn't like a strategic thing being covered. And no. one one thing that and takes he's full on oh, yeah. roping her the whole right. time, and I'm like, holy shit! Like really, uh, like, yeah. as an actor, like, like, uh, yeah, yeah. were they? Were they having sex like right now? Yeah, because it kind of like might be. <laughs> so it was, yeah, it was, the movie was kind of sexy and 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 yeah. and, uh, and not in a like a glamorous Hollywood way, it was, yeah. like in a real natural way. And I I thought that was really good. I do think every once in a while, if you know, some of the caricatures of the of the the other Russians and stuff were yeah. every once in a while there would be a joke. Where I'm like, oh, that doesn't quite fit the tone. Yeah, every once in a while. Every once in a while. But There's... overall, I give this yeah. a strong three stars. I'm also going to give it three. I, it's like really I said, good. though, it's, it's really weirdly you would have liked it better. That beginning yeah. it was yeah. gone it's a three and a half four star movie. i it see it might be one of my favorite viewings if i, I didn't or if i didn't spend I half your, moving just waiting i see your point I but i really happen. but the opening as a filmmaker it, it grabbed yes. me so i loved it so it didn't bother me yes. i guess that's so, how but now we are but yeah, i'm yeah, gonna yeah, talk yeah. about writing <laughs> and in most of these movies uh let's see six movies all of these movies okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right so that's actually my, no I, I, so well, i don't know if there's any, if anything else to add moscow and the hudson uh, but it's, it's a good movie no great movie and definitely check Check it out. Uh, Check it out. The thing, like I said, what we spoiled from you is spoiled in the first minute of the movie. So just fucking watch this movie. Yeah, yeah. No, it's <laughs> okay. good. It's it's yeah. It's um, and it's also on HBO Max. So if you have HBO Max, check it out. It's it's really good. Um, next movie is Streets of Fire, nineteen eighty four, directed by Walter Hill. Walter Hill directed The Warriors, Forty Eight Hours. Um, Extreme Prejudice is a great movie. Um, he's Brewster's Millions isn't, but um, he uh, does. incorrect. Brewster's Millions. What? Is no, okay, no, no, no. Of, I'm, I'm. I was okay, talking about Brewster's Millions. But anyway, okay. so but he kind of started the whole buddy <laughs> cop movie genre in the '80s with 48 Hours. And he also did. He also did Red Heat. With I'm Why didn't he make Bruce this one Street. any good? I don't Fuck you! No way! <laughs> no, no. Okay, it's amazing looking. Okay, <laughs> it's fucking gorgeous. I loved. And whenever there's songs in this movie, I'm like, fuck, that, that song is amazing. I really don't want to have to go back to where they're quote-unquote acting. So, okay? <laughs> this is, okay, so this movie, I gotta talk. I knew, talk. the moment this, like, ten minutes in, I'm like, boy, Austin fucking loves this movie. <laughs> I know Austin loves this fucking movie. And I'm gonna shit on this movie. No! Loves, okay? Look at that poster, too. It's like a... Sure. It's like a graphic novel. It does poster. I'm not. Everything about this movie is fucking cool looking. And 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 the and the just whole. Just mute it. Just mute the movie. So okay? okay. Streets of Fire. No, don't mute the music though. No, Fuck, you can't mute it. God damn it. Okay. <laughs> Streets of Fire is. It says a rock and roll fable in another time and another place. Yeah. The se- the setting of the film is it's it's co- it's somehow 1958 and 1984 all at the same yes time. yeah okay. which is awesome it's <laughs> yeah, so it's cool. It's, cool it's neon but then you get like studebakers and it's just like yeah it's really cool just to go into the premise because i want to talk about like how the movie unfolds too the premise is a pop star gets kidnapped by a biker gang yes um, and I'm, I'm, explain to me why because she's pretty and willem dafoe wants to fall in love there you go that's it that's it wow it's so depth I'm like, I really thought okay. that that, like, okay, before you, bef- I'm sorry, continue with your before thing. Before you start any criticism, <laughs> Walter Hill's intention of the film is to make a live action comic book. There's not depth in, in a lot of comic books. He wow. succeed with what he was trying to do. Okay. With what he was, okay. in the frame of what he was doing. Continue with some okay. synopsis, okay. Okay. and then I will talk about comic books too, <laughs> okay. and how amazing they can be. Okay? <laughs> but not in 1984. You're wrong. <laughs> in the 80s? Yeah, it's the fucking 80s. That's where all the modern comics started, you fucking idiot. <laughs> all right. Streets of Fire. So, okay. So, William Defoe kidnaps her. And then Michael, per- is it Perry? Perry? He. Yeah, I don't know, because he didn't do anything after this. <laughs> <laughs> we was Eddie and the Cruisers before this, but yeah. Yeah. So, um, anyways, uh, he plays Tom Cody, and he used to date her, but his, his older sister sends for him and says, you got to rescue her. He's like, what? Uh, rescue my ex-girlfriend? Thanks a lot. But... He actually talks to Rick Moranis, who plays the pop star, played by Diane Lane's agent, but manager, but also yeah. boyfriend, and uh, gets ten thousand dollars to do it. He meets a um, some lady in the bar, some like kick ass tough chick, um, played by Amy Madigan. They team up and they're like, "Well, you need a job. You can be like my driver or whatever." And so they all go in and infiltrate the biker's place to get her, and they get her out, and then there's a big confrontation at the end between Willem Dafoe and that. that that's the movie. I think for what this film, what Walter Hill was trying to do, it's critic-proof, in my opinion. It is within frame of what they were trying to accomplish. Okay. I think it's a perfect movie. 
within is it the best movie ever made? No, I think within frame of what they were trying to do, I think it's perfect with what they're doing. They want chiseled jaws for the hero. They want him just to stand there and just be like, say his lines very stoic. And it's funny and it's amusing and it's on purpose. The dialogue's I cheesy by design. Everything is by design <laughs> in this film. So it's, Austin, it's I'm going to give you a big hug because right now I'm going to shit the shit out no, of your fucking movie. This movie okay? is so good. So the opening, the opening sequence, the first Pre-title sequence, 10 minutes, so good. Oh, no, you are correct. I was I had never <laughs> even heard of this fucking yeah, movie. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. We're watching the opening. It's literally a music. She's in concert, and I'm like, I had never heard this song Diane before. Diane Lane like, shows this up. This fucking song is amazing. <laughs> I love this fucking song. Every time there is music yeah, in yeah, this yeah, movie, yeah, yeah. I, I'd only heard, like, one song before, yeah, yeah, yeah. okay? And I'm like, oh, my God, every fucking song in this is so fucking but, good. It's so good, and it sounds great. And every time, and I don't think Diane Lang does any of the singing. No, no, no. Okay? But she but does a really good job. She does a really good job of looking yeah. like this would be a great performance by whoever is for singing. She, this. And it was, I was watching the behind the scenes of this. She just turned eighteen when they filmed the movie. So oh she wow! Was just eighteen. Good, good, good. I'm glad you said that. <laughs> feel I, better because if you said she was sixteen, I would have to. I would have to start talking in a real different way. Okay. But yeah, she got hired when she, she was looks, seventeen. She looks a lot older. Yeah, 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 yeah. And she was she got hired when she was seventeen, but they started filming when she Wait, was eighteen. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Okay, how old was Rick Moranis then? He was probably. He might be 30-something, maybe. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Hold on. Let's... And here's the thing. He's Rick Moranis. He's 31. He was 31. Okay. Yeah. But also, I'm like watching it, and I'm like, because I did see, well, first of all, she's just miles out of his league, but she's out of, in this movie, I think she's that was out the point. of, yeah. she's miles out of Everybody's the universe's league. league. She's yeah. so fucking gorgeous in this movie. Yeah, 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 yeah. Dying Lane's eyes. great, yeah. She's so pretty. But yes, in the opening, it's great. So and then yeah. the bikers show up, and I'm like, "Cool!" Well, they, they both they look. Well, cool. Hold on, I gotta, ta- I gotta talk about that though. So the the way the music is, is, so you see this time period, and you see like the streets; it's all neon, and then you hear the pulsating beat, like bump, 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 bump yes. the music. And the way it's edited, it's quick cutting. And normally, I don't like quick cutting, but the purpose of this, and Walter Hill has said this, he wanted to make it like an MTV music video, and that's exactly what yeah, it looks like. It, it does, and he wanted to do that. And at the time, I mean. In the late 80s, early 90s, that's kind of, it became kind of the norm, like, make it like a music video kind of thing, like Jerry Bruckheimer or whatever. But this was one of the first movies to do that, and I, th- and I think it's really innovative. Also, when they start the concert, you know, she they, like, show a close-up of her hand, like, going up before you see her face and you see her shadow, and then yeah. when she starts singing, oh. boom! Oh, and then I, the drummer is just like... Oh, yeah, yeah. And, and just the, the movie, editing... The, I, I, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I agree. The movie... It's fucking gorgeous. There's not a frame in this movie that I'm like, okay, oh, okay. Yeah, this yeah, movie yeah, yeah, yeah. is so fucking right, cool right, looking. Right. And then they kidnap her, yeah, yeah, yeah. and they're cool looking, and you and, and you only see him a silhouette, and then you see Willem Dafoe, and I'm like, that... holy shit, Willem Dafoe, he was terrifying for his entire life! So Look at that fucking monster! When you see, when, <laughs> when you see, like, the music is going, and it's still pulsating, and then you see, like, a, shadow, a bunch of shadows yeah. walk in, you don't see anyone's faces, and then slowly... Willem DeFace, Willem DeFoe's Willem DeFace. face. Willem, Willem DeFoe's DeFace. face. That's his new Willem name. DeFace, okay. Willem DeFoe's <laughs> face gets slowly revealed, and you're like, "Holy oh, shit, this is about to get fucking crazy." Yeah. Also, and because I, 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 I guess I, I'm trying to remember if I even saw him in the opening credits. I must have. So he goes now, and they all yeah. rush the stage. They rush, and then he gets up there and literally fucking screams and tackles her. You're like, yeah. "Holy shit!" He yeah. just fucking tackled oh, her. No. Yeah, it, at that point, I'm like, fuck, this movie's going to be amazing. And then he and throws her over the shoulder, and they take off. And then on the streets, there's people running around. Gang members are, like, there's there's a guy, like, being dragged by a motorcycle. People are flying through windows. Cop cars are flipping over. And it's just like, what the fuck is happening? It's just crazy. And then, boom, the credits. <laughs> it's just like, oh, yeah. holy I, shit. I, I checked. There were still credits slowly happening. At like the 16 minute yeah. mark of this movie, I'm like, shit, yeah. there's still more credits. No, granted, they're just sort of happening while people are doing things. Okay? Yes. So the, uh, all the characters in this movie, again, by design, are one dimension. Yes. By design. I and, by, and I, I don't I, mind. I, I, I know. You know what I compare because, this to? Because this is a movie for you. <laughs> you yeah. I wanted. I mean, granted, the music and shit. You don't know, stuff is amazing. You don't but, like I, compare this? but like the twenty minute mark, I'm like, are you boy, I, a fan? I wish that what happened that I gave a shit about. Are you a fan <laughs> of Big Trouble in China? 
Because I would com- seen it like once. I would compare that to this. Because Big Trouble in Little China is the kind of the same thing. Where it's just one dimensional characters. It's just a comic book movie where the you know people are saying one liners and that's it. And that's I would compare that's that fine. to this. I'm gonna tell you they do it. They do a better job of the acting in that one. Willem Dafoe in this is the only one that I thought oh, was no, I really like- good because Willem Dafoe can say anything and make it fucking <laughs> he's like, really good oh that made total sense now because Willem Dafoe just said it I don't care how terrifying what he said is it made perfect sense because I think he's, he's good the most terrifying person in the world oh he's okay. fantastic I, I thought Rick Moranis I liked him in the movie he's well okay a lot of the other stuff because they are trying to make him sound I don't know in dead end the yeah. kids all talked in weird gangster yeah, speak, yeah, 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 yeah. but also I'm like They'd all seen these gangster movies. I honestly believe in 1939, a lot of kids tried to talk like that. Yeah, I think so too. Nobody tried to talk like anything in this movie, in the history of the universe. Okay, It's it's a different movie. It's a different, another time, another place. It says that in the movie. So like a half hour in the movie, I'm like, I wish I gave one red shit about anything that was happening. Oh, I was just having, I'm literally just going to wait until the next pretty thing happens. I think it's I'm going to make it through the movie and there's going to be more music because also... The opening thing, like you said, yeah. the opening, and then yeah. the actually the herb she has another performance right at the end, and I'm like, that's awesome. This too. one's even fucking better than the first one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, yeah. This was fucking amazing. And you know what's really cool too, because you know they they were rekindled a love relationship or whatever, but they have the big kiss in the rain towards the end. And you're like, oh, they're gonna get back together. Nope. I like that. No, I was no, awesome. Yeah, no, that, like, that's, that's good. That was I really was like, cool. I don't want, but I also knew who he was going to get together with because they literally brought out a character at like the 25 minute mark. I'm like, oh, he's going to end up with her instead. Okay. Hey, <laughs> you're not my type. That's what she says. Yeah. Don't, yeah they, they fucking bang later. No. After the fucking movie's done, he gets in there. So when I watch he's this. He's got magic fuck power. Yeah, yeah, what yeah. What are you yeah. talking about? <laughs> so it was a, like six months Look, ago. Granted, he apparently wants to fuck that chick with a wig, with a mop on her head. Oh, yeah. That hair is weird. Oh, right, right. <laughs> so it's, it, so it, Amy, a, Amy Madigan. I lo- Actually, I loved her in this movie. Oh, okay. She's so good. And, and what, you know what's great about this is that part was written for a man. And she auditioned for the sister. Oh, to be really? The sister. And then she was reading the script, and she went to Walter Hill. She's like, "I would love to play this part. You should change it to be a woman." And Walter Hill said, "Sometimes you gotta take good ideas when you get them." And he and he changed it. I mean, for okay. Her. As much as I, here's the thing. I sound like I'm gonna. I'm just gonna. Yeah, shit yeah, 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 I'm yeah, gonna yeah, get yeah. like two and a half stars. Okay. It's it's a it's a beautiful movie. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, yeah, too yeah, yeah, fucking yeah, yeah. gorgeous, and the music is actually okay <laughs> we literally have four movies in here that are about music yeah, yeah 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 yeah. this one has the most songs i had never heard before yeah uh no actually beat street has most songs i've never heard before oh right because right, i'd right. never heard of a single one of these people that was in that movie <laughs> okay this one maybe it was just that because he knows how to make movies and do yeah. the sound better yeah it just sounds better it's, it's so everything good everything sounds but so good but i'm telling you there are parts of this movie where I'm like, God damn it, I just don't care. Just get to the next cool thing. I'm just so fucking bored. When, it's so boring. Just shut up. When Amy nothing Madigan... You, nothing you people say makes any sense. I hate everybody. Amy Madigan's <laughs> intro is when she's in the bar and she's drinking and then... You know, yeah, I'm, she, a, I'm, I'm rough and tumble. No, and I'm like, but she wants, but she wants more <laughs> stuff. She's just like, hey, and she's like, I don't like your Bill Paxton. The bartender's like, I yeah. don't like your face. And I'm she turns, Paxton, she turns right. over, she looks over at Tom and was just like, that, every time I go somewhere, there's just another asshole. She punches him in the face, grabs the booze. What are you drinking? I fucking love that. It's so funny. One of my my favorite line that uh, Tom Cody says, Michael Perry says in the movie. is the this really exciting scene where they actually infiltrate the place. I thought that was a really good scene where she's like pretends to like one of the guys and then she's like she's like, Okay guys, I'm here to take everyone, you know, and hands up and then they rescue her. He Tom Cody's shooting all the motorcycles outside. So the streets are literally on fire. Willem Dafoe comes out and you see the flames behind him. It's then, so pretty. Then, I'm not saying it is no, the no, most no, beautiful thing no, in the no, world. I just, I just want to talk about this scene. <laughs> then, Willem Dafoe is awesome in it, actually. Then <laughs> then Michael Perry is standing there. You know, he's responsible for doing it. And Willem Dafoe's like, who the hell are you? And without missing a beat, his delivery just cra- laugh every time. Michael Perry goes, Tom Cody, nice to meet you. Every fucking time. It, it, I belly laugh. Like, it's so funny how it's, he says that. Like I said, I'm giving it's the movie so, like two and a half stars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I just... It's oh. just, here's the thing. It's pretty enough to be like one of the prettiest movies. The, one, the amazing. Oh. I just didn't like... His the actual writing and movie part. <laughs> his his introduction, his introduction when he's fighting those guys in his in his sister's restaurant. 
when he like takes out that that switchblade, the, the bad guy's like, do that again, and he's like smacks him around like five, like fifty times. <laughs> Funny, hilarious, there fun. Was that cool bitch slapping. I remember at that point, I'm like, at that point, I was still like, still. I'm, I'm still trying to like, okay, it's really cool. We're, we're like, for the last 15 minutes, nothing's happened. Then I give it a shot. Well, that's why right before we watched cool it. Stuff happens. Well, that's why right before we watched it, I wanted to prepare you for what type of movie this don't was. Don't ever do that. And right, and I and you said, don't do it. Never like, Damn it. fucking do that. I wanted to that. prepare you I what was. Okay, here's the thing that I'm happiest about this podcast, yeah, yeah, yeah. Austin. Yeah. I have listened to people who review. You know, we, we are both more heavy into board games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll listen to a board game podcast yeah and they'll do a review and they just fucking agree on everything yeah, yeah. i'm sorry <laughs> we're not gonna agree on a lot of movies, no 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 but fine. we also aren't gonna hate each other after no, no, no 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 it depends oh i'm sorry you do like played against sam way too fucking much okay i, I didn't like it <laughs> no you gave it two stars i still you didn't just, like it here's the thing i'm still gonna say this about yeah, played yeah. against sam i'm sad that you just like I'm, i don't like i only like that movie as much as i like most movies no okay? <laughs> no, no 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 i wish it was a really good one because it was woody allen and he's my favorite i like skyjacked <laughs> better than the played against sam is fine skyjacked okay well this is okay. like, this is like five episodes ago we're not talking about that shit so uh, <laughs> The sledgehammer fight at the end. I loved it. That was so great. Okay. The sledgehammer. When they picked up the sledgehammers, I'm like, this is going to be fucking awesome. Then it was all fast cuts and none of it. Oh, flow. right, right, right. It it doesn't flow. Because I'm yeah, like, yeah. here's the thing. The guy's good at making movies. I'm also spoiled. If yeah, you yeah. watch an action movie that comes out now and they do the action well, yeah, yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah. it all flows. They'll do a swing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then even if they cut, the swing makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this, yeah, yeah. they'll cut and I'm like, okay. That, that doesn't even look remotely like the same swing. Okay? One part that, that cracked me up with Willem Dafoe, too, is after they're done with the sledgehammers, like they, they don't have them in their hand anymore, and then he just throws it down and he's going to do a fist fight, and then Willem Dafoe just does that scream, ah! And he, like, runs at him. Well, yeah. Cracks well, actually, when they time. did the fist fight, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he had filmed the fist fights before. It was, it was better. It, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. it's filmed better. Yep. But no, the sledgehammers, when they get it, I'm like, oh shit. Like, come on. This like, movie is I just. They're, they're like weird, bald scene sledgehammers. The things. whole entire movie is just a vibe. It is, you, yes. it is, it is, a, you just go to it and you're just, you get this feeling from it. And I didn't see this when I was a kid. I feel like if I saw this as a kid, it would have been, it would be my favorite movie of all time. Like, I would have fucking yeah, okay. loved it when I was Here's seven. Here's the thing. Maybe. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah. there's definitely movies that I saw when I was younger that I just fucking loved. And yeah. then I made the mistake of watching that movie again, and I'm like, oh, but I wish I hadn't done this. So the first okay. time I saw this was like maybe 10 or so years ago, and I was just like, why didn't I ever see this before? Because it really surprised me. Yeah, I, I just, I love everything about this movie. This is four stars for me. Like, I think, oh, I think, I, I, I gave it two and a half. Yeah, That's fine. I think within the frame of what they were trying to do, no, but like they I were said, the, it, by design. Everything is by design. Like even your critiques, it's by design. Yes, it's like, but like I said, like twenty minutes into the movie, and I'm like, I was getting kind of bored, and I'm like, right, boy, right. Austin loves this fucking. Movie. <laughs> I love Austin's it so much. I love, love everything about it. Movie. And then another actor that I want to talk about real quick is Rick Rosovich. He played not the Captain Black Cop, <laughs> Captain Black Cop. But there's the two cops. Yeah, which he's are the, the white only one. cops in the He's universe. the white one. Okay, actually, the guy, the black. I'm sorry, the captain was awesome. Was the other guy? Was is this character named Captain Black Cop? No, no. Because no. you know, some I might I might bump it up to three stars. <laughs> so, but Rick Rossman <laughs> played the white cop, and he, whatever happened to that guy? Because he was in Terminator, he was in uh, Roxanne, he was in Top Gun as Val Kilmer. I think I had co-pilot. Seen, I think I had seen him in stuff, and. He was also in Navy movies? SEALs. He was everywhere. But and I'm this like, what happens in all these movies we watch? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, like, oh, I've seen that guy in a bunch of stuff, but I've never heard of this fucking movie. Where has okay. he been? So, I know. Was, anyway, so <laughs> I mean, uh, Bosco and Hudson. I'm like, I don't know any of their names, but I knew like yeah, yeah, 90% yeah, 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 yeah. of the people that showed up in that movie. Okay? So, I think Streets of Fire. So, it, it, I feel like within 15 t- minutes of the movie or whatever, you're going to realize if this movie's for you yes, or not. But here's the thing. Just keep watching it. It's still, the stuff you're going to like is going to be great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, I don't know. Do but just know it's going to have one dimensional characters, cheesy when, dialogue, yes, yes, on purpose. And I yes. just, I just think it's just a fun, fun movie. And every yeah. time I watch it, it, gets better. Every time. Yeah, I, I'm never going to know. <laughs> and seeing it in the theater for the first again. time. I yeah, no, I watch. love it. It's, I have too many movies to watch for this fucking podcast now. I can't watch other movies. So, again. Firestarter is our next one. Yes, okay. it is. Now, I've never seen this. This movie. is the. Uh, this is. This is the other fire the other, movie. The other link that we have in this episode: two fire movies. Moscow and Hudson is a. Does, this is the outcast. Yeah. Actually, I guess I don't think we talked about the soundtrack. That does have a weird synthy soundtrack thing. But Paul Mazursky, uh, the Moscow and Hudson. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, that was the. That was. I mean, it's not bad. It's just it was different than I expected. I'm going back now. <laughs> Who did the? 
Was that? Oh, I can't that, remember. I David was, McHugh. Never heard of him. Oh, maybe, right. oh, maybe I'm wrong. There was something that had like a synth. Oh, no, this the does. player starter. That's this so, one. This had a Tan- weird synthy so, soundtrack. This yeah. Tangerine Dream did the score, which they were known for doing. A, like they did yeah. Thief, which is a really great score. They did a lot of great scores. They did Legend, the Legend soundtrack. Yeah, Firestarter, based off Stephen King novel, um, directed by Mark L. Lester, who was actually a exploitation B filmmaker. He didn't really do a whole lot of studio films. This was like his first big one, I think. Um, he do, did Class of 1984. Um, truck stop women in the 70s so he would do all this stuff he went on to direct Commando I um, mean direct Commando after this okay so cool. Your film. cool um, but stars uh, Drew Barrymore is in there she's on the poster and everything and she's hot off of E.T. yeah so she was like 8 or 9 when they filmed yeah, this yeah she's okay that's one of the comments I was thinking when I was thinking I'm like I, we've all seen better, good ch- better child actors than in this movie uh, but uh, also yeah. there were like 12 she's like 6 it's like 7 years old nobody's ever she's actually as good as young as she is, I think she's pretty solid in this movie. So <laughs> Abigail Breslin and Signs, she was like five in that movie. She's, I think she's way better. Yeah, but she doesn't movie. have the lead role. Right, she, right, right. Literally, right. this yeah. movie is called. Or Haley Joe Osment. Like, this movie might also just be Haley Joe Osment. But he was like, sense. he was at least ten. Okay, maybe. maybe ten or eleven. Maybe she's like know. literally. She was. She was, eight. She, was eight they, she was eight when they. She was eight when they filmed. And the movie is literally might as well just be called. By the way, you remember remember me in, in E. T. Here's another movie with me in it. Okay, <laughs> that's basically what it might be called. Okay. David Keith plays her dad. She has like this power, and the movie starts off with her be the, them being chased by some like agents or whatever. Yes. So we find out through flashbacks that David Keith and Heather Locklear were being experimented on by this doctor and stuff like that, and they. And they getting, had some drug that they right, gave them that, that activated their 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 X Men. Okay? Yeah, <laughs> right, exactly. Powers, okay? And then so then they have a kid. So obviously, so she gets some of the powers and stuff. She and, got her own soul, so, whole right. set of powers. Right, and, and so then they ignore some. It's, of those it's basic. <laughs> it's basically a road movie where they're being chased on the run. Martin Sheen is kind of the head guy that's that's ahead yeah. of it, and then George C. Scott plays a um, kind of assassin hired guy that's going that's. He's well, kind of well, like the well, one that well, does all well, the work. We'll be talking about him. He's weird. Um, so and then <laughs> I don't understand it. Yeah, thing. yeah. And then uh, so it, it it all leads up to them just being chased, and are they going to get caught or not? And then when when they eventually do get caught, they start doing experiments on her and stuff, and realize the full kind of potential over Potter po- power. One person even says. Literally, she could crack a hole in the planet. I mean, I maybe. Well, well then he well, said that. Well, okay. They do talk about okay. This movie, at some points, is trying to be Carrie. Okay? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay? And the, even, even to the point where they say, once she basically hits, like, an 18-month period of, of puberty, what she turns into a, I don't know, a teenage girl, I guess. Yeah, yeah. They just assume the universe is going to explode. Okay? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, I guess, maybe. Except for, in this movie, whenever her powers activate, it's like... 30 minutes until the powers actually go. And I'm like, well, what are boy, I tell you, if her powers hit on a dime, like, bang, when she's pissed, yeah. you might explode into a million pieces. Well, that would make it a hundred times better. How movie. her power, when her powers go, her, like, the wind machine comes yeah, out. Yeah, they even show like, it in the poster. Like it's like, by the way, you know the the, hor- the horrible the horrible mistake we made when making this movie? We're going to put it in the poster. Okay? <laughs> Where it takes 20 fucking, yeah, it takes, like, yeah. okay, as much as I was joking for, literally, like, 40 seconds. Yeah. For some reason. And they're all just going to sit there and watch them like, oh, which one of us is going to start on fire? You know, I don't know, killer? Okay. So (laughs) you're all going to die. Shoot her in the head. Okay. (laughs) All right. So going to my critique, I I don't hate this movie. Yeah. I don't hate it. I didn't hate it. Um, it. It could have been a lot better. It could have been. And I'll tell you exactly why it could have been better. Because the original director was fired when his last movie flopped. What movie was it? Oh, the no, thing. no, no, that's right. That's right. That's John Carpenter, Carpenter but he, was what, online to direct this movie. When was Christine? Because he did direct that. Yes. So in, so he directed that instead of doing this movie. Okay. So he that's was... That's why that's a better movie. He was, yeah. He was going to direct... He was going to direct Firestarter after the thing and it flopped and they took him off this project. This, if he, he would have knocked oh, this out of the park. Yes. If he there are aspects and, of this movie and that are synth, actually really good. And the synth score would have been better. I, oh, I, yes. I like Tangerine Dream's score normally. I don't really, I didn't really like it in yeah, this movie. that was the thing. I'm it like, wasn't uh, fast paced Was this enough. supposed to be, yeah, it was, was slower. I'm like wondering if it was supposed to like increase the tension instead of just like said, I'm not actually bored with what's going on. 
But that music wants me to be bored, it's, apparently. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's kind of boring music from... And I like Tangerine Dream normally. Yeah. So I was... But I think John Carpenter would have knocked it out of the park. Also, uh, the other weak link in this movie is David Keith as the dad. I didn't like him in the movie. Really? No. In I fact... Didn't, I, I didn't completely love him, but actually... No, I don't like him. Because he also has his powers. And his powers... Is no, his character is good. I don't like and his he, When he uses his powers, they film it well. Because he, like, grabs his head. Yeah, yeah. And I actually liked his, his use of powers is more interesting yeah. to watch yeah. than her use of powers. And her use of powers literally involves explosions. Yes. Okay? <laughs> well, the with David Keith, I think if John Carpenter would have been bored, one would wonder if, one wonders if he would have taken Kurt Russell with him. Because he... That would have been like cool. Kurt, It would have been, I think... Yes. With with Carpenter and, and, and Russell in, this would have been a really good movie. I like, think. okay, did they have Drew Barrymore and they're like, we're going to make this movie. I think, and it's basically, it's a I, Drew Barrymore vehicle yeah, and everybody yeah. else is just I here. think she, okay. I want to say probably, because who else were they going to get at this time? Yes. Anyways. Unless like, they really, aged her up to like a teenager or something. I don't but think yeah. they would have done anything else. Um, That's my issues with the movie. My the best part of the movie for me is the the finale when she's blowing everything oh, up. Oh yes, that shit is amazing. Because that's the way it should be. She's mad. Okay, oh. she just looks at you and then you're dead. Okay, right, fire. It's so good. It is actively trying to be Carrie at that point. Yeah. And the reason the end of Carrie works so well is when when things happen. Well, actually, for all of Carrie, yeah. whenever she does a thing. It just bang, it happens. Yeah. There's not this thing where you're like, oh, things about to happen. Let's all just sit here and wait for the thing to happen. No, just fucking do it, you idiot. Okay? So the, oh, and Art Carney's in here. That's right. Art he's, Carney's he's, in it, but yeah, he's, he's he fine. Can, he gets shot like eight times, but he's fine. It's weird. Okay? Um, so this movie would have been two stars. I'm giving it a two and a half because every time George C. Scott was on screen, I fucking loved it. Okay. I, his character was weird. Was he a creepy pedophile? I wasn't sure. He okay. is, but his, but his performance is awesome. Yeah, he's I good loved as him. In he's this he's movie. good as it, but I wasn't sure what he was. That's what kind of made it creepier. His, his, he had like a scar. I think it was a burn on and, his and, face. He, and like had a glass was, eye. Yeah. yeah, or something. And then he would put a... He would eye put patch a, on because he didn't want to scare Drew Barrymore. That's why but, he did it, I think. But he did it like half the time. Yeah. Okay? And I'm um, like, it was really random. And I'm like... Yeah. I don't and then he had long hair and a ponytail. Like, he almost looked Native American a little bit. I think he was supposed to be because yeah, at one yeah, point yeah, he's yeah. like wearing this like yeah. macho thing, and I'm like, but is he supposed to be a one of the first Native scenes? Well, you see him in because <laughs> normally like George C. Scott, he's loud and boisterous, and this he's just talking really slow. Yeah, it deep. still was weird. His he's character great. was weird because at one point he literally tells Martin Sheen his entire plan is be, is mostly to become friends with Drew and then murder her. Yeah, and I'm like, but wait. You, uh, he d- he actively doesn't want her murdered. He wants to turn her into a weapon. But then Martin Sheen does nothing about it. And I'm like, what's going on here? I don't understand the motivations in this fucking the, scene. The one, okay? the, the best, my favorite thing when you see George C. Scott, he actually doesn't say anything, was when that doctor guy played by Freddie Jones is sleeping and he wakes up and George C. Scott's fucking looking over him and he's fucking sweating profusely. And then he just karate chops him yeah. in the face. Yeah. That was a setup. Holy shit. That was 100% shit. was just a setup because later on he's like, I'm going to karate. That'll chop her in the face and bone fragments will go into her brain. I'm like, oh, that's what, I mean, I guess, I mean, that's what happened. You believed it because the sound and the way they shot it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Because sometimes I've seen that movies. That character existed purely to be the guy who was like, oh, I'm against this and now I'm going to be dead. I've seen <laughs> movies where people get punched and then they like die or something. I'm like, yeah. that did not seem convincing. This would seem like, oh, yeah, yeah. That guy's that, fucking well, dead. I, mean, I knew he was dead. That guy's dead. I knew. <laughs> I'm like, holy shit, that was just a karate shop. But I also know he's dead now. Okay, he's but never coming back. Just the way they f- they film that with the certain, like, you know, uh, the angles and stuff. I don't think the movie's poorly directed. I think. I think I, I think, I think it's mostly Pl- it's mostly her. Yeah, the problems when she does her thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just badly done, and it's literally the movie is yeah. about this thing that they don't do a very good job. Except the end it was pretty. Awesome. Well, at the end, she's like throwing Those fireballs, fireballs and shit. And, shit, and I'm oh like, God, everything had to be so practical awesome. at the time, so I'm like, oh, it okay, looks so cool. I understand. Those are they just pointed fireworks at people, and then they which which is that's what if yeah. you pointed that like one of those Roman candles, yeah. that, that's what it looks like. The last like, confrontation, sense. final confrontation with uh, George C. Scott too was great. The way like he shoots the bullet at her, and then the bullet just yeah. stops, and then boom, and he just yeah. that flies back on fire. And I'm like, quote unquote, bulletproof. That was she's so super great. Yeah. And they all start shooting at her, and yeah. just like all these Superman idiots, everybody else shoots at her. They all see the bullets are just deflecting or melting. But 
my bullets are magic special. I'm also so, going to shoot at her. I'm like, stop shooting at you, Morris. Run. So okay? it's, it's hard. To, it's hard to fault a movie for what it isn't because. If John Cooper would have made this movie, it would have been so much better. Oh, it would have been awesome. So much like better. Like, I, I saw I saw Christine in the theater, okay. and it, I, I loved it then. Yeah, yeah, It's yeah, one yeah. of those ones I haven't seen since oh, then, because I'm, I'm terrified of whether it's any good. I'm a big Carpenter fan, so yeah. I, I'm sure that... I'm sure this, it's good. Yeah, I'm but sure this would have been good. So, I, been so awesome but I'm, right. I'm giving it a two and a half because George C. Scott. I really like George C. Scott in the movie. Weird. I um, didn't... I mean, I... I, I I'm was, a big fan of him, and he was George one of my favorite actors. I think George C. Scott did a good job. I just don't think his character was anything that anybody could do, could fix. Because it made... It didn't... He was weirdly... Some of the stuff he said, I'm like, um, does he want to fuck Drew? What the fuck's happening here? Well, but no, he wants to murder her. But I'm like, why? There's no explanation no, for anything of his but stuff. that didn't okay. bother me because it was the mysterious of it. Yeah, Which yeah. was just well, like, I'm, this guy's fucking scary as shit. I don't I mean, know... Because when you don't I'm understand give it two someone, stars. okay, two. I was gonna give it two, until, but because of George's kind of up, some up of that, that is me. the disappointment where I'm like, well, okay, actually, because I didn't hate, I didn't hate the dad as much as you. I didn't like him. No, David Keith, I thought. Was, no, there's some. No, he's I, a fine I, actor. He's just weirdly, miscast, I, I think thought. some of his problems were mostly from directing and yeah, stuff. And weirdly, because in the one of the flashbacks, you see Heather Locklear, which was the mother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She isn't in the movie very much because no. she totally gets murdered. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> she only exists in flashbacks. Right, okay? Right, right. She's totally dead before the movie starts. Um, uh, He finds her, and you're right. He's, like, sobbing, and I'm like, okay, whatever. Just go fucking whatever. And then he calls somebody <laughs> up at random and says, is is uh, is uh Drew there? Or Charlie, whatever yeah, yeah, her yeah. name is. Okay? <laughs> and then the next scene you see is he goes there. Although, here's the thing. His power was cooler. Yeah. In many ways. He yeah. literally made those two guys be blind. You're blind. Okay? And now that guy's just not blind. It Apparently, makes the, a make painful, the, painful version of blind. Made the okay? taxi driver see a $100 bill. Yeah, or... he saw that. He told he told Martin Sheen to murder. <laughs> I will say there's a, a couple. But act- that didn't work. <laughs> there's a couple actors that were wasted in this movie. Antonio Fargus, who's a great black exploitation actor, did a lot of stuff in the seventies. He was the the taxi driver, and it's like really just cast him as the taxi driver. Like yeah. he's such a fucking awesome actor. And then Louise yeah. Fletcher played Art Carney's wife. Louise Fletcher literally is Nurse Ratchet. You put her in that? Yeah. Come on. It's weird. You know it's what I would have? I would have. It would have been interesting if you put her as Martin Sheen's character. That, that would be cool. That would have been good. Martin Sheen wasn't terrible. No, he's not fine. There's a, his there's hair is a, fucking oh, crazy. Oh, his hair, his hair is full eighties. Okay, <laughs> it's, it's like like, the, like a crazy. It's like <laughs> yeah. There's it's so like, I don't know if it's a wig. I don't know what the fuck's going on over there. <laughs> it's a hair helmet. But there's the scene was. where yeah. after they've captured her, yeah. she literally starts a fire for them because the George C. Scott character yeah. has convinced her in some weird backhanded way. Oh yes, that's another weird thing that happens in this movie. For the first half of the movie, she has another power. She can see the future or see if bad guys are coming. Completely ignore it when George C. has gotten in the area uh, because he, he tranquilizes her. They didn't like, really. Uh, and then you find out there's like 80 other people there. I'm like, why didn't she fucking know this? They didn't really just, develop that part. Just really edit well that part all. out of the far, no. first movie. Just yeah. say she hasn't got that power. If because right. oh, she doesn't need more than Firestarter power. No. Why does she have that power? Then you're just gonna fucking ignore it. Uh, yeah, it wasn't. Well, that wasn't developed. Yeah, well. it's like uh, that's another thing. Which I'm pretty sure Carpenter would have said, would have just said. Yeah, well, yeah. I, here's the thing. Never read the book. Yeah, I've either. read Carrie okay. back in the day. I think I might have read Christine. Okay, like the movie. I can't remember. It was a fucking long time ago. I do remember reading Carrie. I never read this. Uh, I have no idea what changes were made. I'm sure, there was probably a bunch. This is one of the ones where Stephen King uh, approved of oh. the script, unlike Shining. Which he hates that movie, even though the rest of the universe his opinion doesn't movie. mean that much to me because he directed Maximum Overdrive. That's not well. Really no, no, he directed. <laughs> it, but that was a directing thing. Also, it's Maximum yeah. Overdrive. That movie also. I I've read the short story based on Maximum. That that's Maximum the Overdrive. only King thing I've read. I've read the trucks. Right. Yeah. That has a very. That's a very different so feel to different. it, and has so a very different. different ending to it. Very different. And the the trucks win at the end of that book. Oh, yeah. <laughs> at the end of that story. Oh yeah. Uh, next one. Okay, here we go. Now it's dance time. Beat Street. Beat Street. <laughs> okay, another uh, just to start. Every time music happened, loved it. Yeah. Oh yeah. So well, that's the the thing of for this the movie. rest of these three movies. So obviously, <laughs> we're in 1984. The big craze right here was 
Break dancing. Yes. And 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 the hip hop scene was just kind of just yes. was really just starting on oh, fire. Oh, another sport. Was getting alert. into the mainstream. <laughs> so Beat Street. Is, so it's they literally took non actors and put them in in these characters. So they're, most of them are real breakers, except Radon Chong was like the only like kind of actress in here. It was Tommy Chong's daughter, which I didn't know oh, that for I a while. Didn't know that at all. Yeah. Well, you know, you're familiar with Radon Chong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In this movie, it's just there's not that much of a plot to be honest in this movie. Uh, there's more they, of a clear plot in Breaker. They try. But, it's like a soap opera. There's like eight plots, but yeah. they don't give them any time. Okay? Right, 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 right. There are a lot of subplots <laughs> in this movie, but they're all an excuse just to bridge the dance scenes and stuff. Yes, in the movie. 100%. One of the guys is, I think his name is what, Kenny? And he, he's a DJ, and he also raps and comes up with rhymes and hip-hops. Yeah. They like will rent out like an upstairs at this abandoned building, or they're at this abandoned building, they just have like freeform styles, and they have dancing of stuff going on. Yeah. They also go dancing at the Roxy. Then they meet Radon Chong, who sees the breakers and was like, oh, I like you. You should come by and, and uh, I'll show you off to all my other dancing friends kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but Here's the thing. Weird, weird thing about this movie, I don't remember very much. But yeah. It's not it's, very memorable. No, it's I not. Don't it's not shit like the movie. plot. And, and then you, you have one of the guys, Ramon, he's the tagger, so he likes to tag things. But then there's a guy that's like ruining his tags called Spitz. And then, uh, so th- there's that little subplot. Also, he also has a kid <laughs> um, that he's trying to, he's trying to, because he doesn't have a job, so he's trying to, like, get better, take care of his kid, whatever. Kenny has a little brother, and he's, like, a young breaker, and they introduce him as, like, this main character. Last hour of the movie, he's in one scene. It's just like, oh, they just forget about him. Yeah. They have the so- scene where he, where he does that kind of that weird fight, dance fight. And then he gets arrested for dancing because they thought oh, they were yeah. fighting. Well, yeah, that's right. They were dancing. Also, they were dancing with a bunch of people we've never seen before, and we're never going to see again. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I did like I did like the scene though when his mom goes to pick him up, and she's at first you thought she was going to yell at, at at her son, but then she's like, "You arrest him for dancing." There's many other things that he could be doing. Yeah, you know? it's it's it, that's what this movie is though. Yeah. it's just a bunch of disjointed scenes yeah. with some mild linkage to some yep, of these scenes. Yep, yep, Although yep. I mean, his thing. Literally never links to anybody else. No, he's, just a, he's one of their ki- one of their brothers, I guess, or whatever. Right? He was my favorite dancer in the movie. Oh he's, yeah, he's fucking awesome. Well, there's actually a lot of good dancers so, in this movie. Though. Okay, there's also the music in this is a very different than any of the other ones yeah. to a degree. They more about hip hop. This, this is more keyed on to the artists. Yeah, there'll be a random like. Here's a group. That you've yeah. never heard of. Well, one of and them. They're amazing. One of them had <laughs> like that one when they well, like the Santa Claus one, Santa Claus rap. One of those guys is Cool Mo D. Oh God! There's the weird three heads in the sheet thing. Cool Mo D, a rap, is... who became a famous rapper. He was one of the guys. Yeah, in there. yeah. Weird. Um, it's. It, I mean, it's freaky. That was a fun it's, scene. It's fun. It's okay, freaky. So I'm with you scenes. on this. Every but, dance scene in this movie was really fun to watch. Yeah. Arguably, this might have the best dancing in the movie. Uh, in in these, it, I think all the all the dancers in this are better dancers. I think so. Than the other movies. I think so. Yeah, I, w- I would say that every other movie's better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I no, I didn't hate this movie. I actually so I would instead of having the because the actors are fine, but they're just themselves. The yeah. thing is, yeah. by trying to shoehorn like this Hollywood stuff in there, it it has this really unnatural feel it'd be one thing if they made it kind of cheesy and fun and laughable <laughs> breaking and but they don't they make it, they, it it's it's they try to make it serious in fact they're trying to do kind of like a saturday night fever thing where they're trying to have it serious and then a tragedy happens at the yes. end of the movie where one of the it guys is, dies which trying, I, I did kind of laugh at that it's trying to be um, 1984 is saturday night did you guys fever. laugh at the, did you or did you laugh at that when the I, wa- I watched this movie completely only no, no, with no. you and other people in the room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Were in the no, no, no. But there did was you not think... another friend of ours that, <laughs> that I watched this that no, you weren't there. Away, there was away. No, certainly nothing. Did you did you <laughs> laugh at uh, when the when the guy died? With the, like oh, on the on the third rail? Yeah. Oh yeah, it was. Well, when they okay, there's a one of the one of the characters yeah. is a graffiti artist. Yeah, and he has a rival. This whole thing. He yeah. has a rival, and that rival just spray paints over his stuff. To yeah. like basically try to make people think it's his, I think. Yeah, Although yeah, yeah. he doesn't know how his signatures work, you know, put it right on top. Yeah. But whatever. Okay. <laughs> I think he's just trying but to ruin the, it. But yeah. then the other guy is extra stupid because he does it while the other while the main guy is like in the room. Yeah. So of course he gets caught, you fucking idiot. But yeah. whatever. It's in the subway. Yeah, and they're fighting. And they're running down the they run they run. Yeah, this they, is like, like the last twenty chased. minutes of the movie. Yeah. yeah, it's it's the main plot point of the movie, which happens right at the end. 
because yeah. he he gets killed by him and the other guy both hit the third rail in the, the subway Alexa, thing. Yeah, they fry. And they, both, they both fry. I was like, holy shit. Yeah. Well, I, I was like, oh my God, are they going to hit by a train? Well, I thought they were going to hit gonna, by a train. How about this? Gonna... I'm going to use the royal we. Okay? <laughs> we. <Yeah. laughs> we were like sitting there. And uh, I thought it was going to hit by a train. And I'm like, they're going to hit by a train. I and then so. they like telegraphed the third rail thing. Oh, one of them's going to die on the third rail. Oh, is the is he going to? And at that point, I'm like, oh, he's going to like accidentally throw that guy on the third rail, and then he's going to get like arrested. No, for they both, they're both. Nope, they're both dead. <laughs> <laughs> they're both super dead. Third rail will kill you. I, okay. I would have preferred uh, this film if it was a documentary. If this was a documentary, have yes. the real people in this movie doing their dances, do and then, talking head and, shit, and then interviews with them. Yeah, I think it I, could it even w- be fake. It could even be we're going to make up storylines for you people, but you just say them as talking heads, and then we go back to some. I people think who do some. I stuff, think I would have okay? liked that a better. It would have had more natural yeah. feel. They're trying to be a movie, I, and then periodically they say, oh, "By the way, you're also at a concert." <laughs> so, I, but I didn't hate this movie by any means. I, um, yeah. So I'm probably going to give it a higher rating than you. I, I'm not. It's not a full recommendation. I'm giving it a two and a half because I liked all the dancing in the movie and it was harmless to watch. That's the thing. And it was just kind of like it was really fun to watch. But anytime it, I was just like, okay, get on to the next dancing. But there was a lot of dancing in it. So there was a, there was a lot. Yeah. So uh, so it's every time compared to, to that, the last one we were going to watch. No, which is right, 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 right. Oh, you want? Oh, oh, you, you can't go to the bathroom because you're going to miss all the dancing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so that was so that was yeah that was that was Beat Street. So what what would you give it? A two? I'm going to give it a two. Yeah, that sounds yeah, about right. It's like I was a, between a two and two and a half. Every time there's music and dancing, yeah. it's awesome. Every time there's not music and dancing, you know. Take your phone out and do whatever you want. Yeah, yeah. Meaningless garbage. Okay. Yeah, I was between two, two and a half, but I like the dancing so much that I just, if you like this kind of thing, if you, if you, especially if you're a break or a break dancer and like watching break dancing, th- this is something I can recommend to watch the dancing. Yeah. This, so I had never heard a single song that was in this one before, and I loved all the songs. Right. But then again, like I said, target audience. For all this music, okay? yeah, 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 yeah. It's, full, it's good music. Yeah, fifteen years Great old. Music. It's like Tim. Okay, you're gonna, you're gonna listen to music, and then you're gonna masturbate, then you're gonna listen to music. Okay, those are what you're gonna do. It's fifteen years old. Okay? Beat, Beat Street. So yeah, it's Beat Street. Next one. Went to the drive, and what car did we steal this time? Uh, what car? 1984. Did we get a uh, my gremlin? Mom, my mom had a Pinto. We stole that. Sure. Okay. <laughs> so we're at the drive-in to see. Oh, we could have stole my neighbor's gremlin. I don't know if they had it in 84. Or, or <laughs> Omnis or Horizons or whatever. Okay. Kind of Footloose and, and Break-In. Are, uh, there's a double feature here that we got to see at the drive-in. So Footloose. So I've seen this. A bunch of times, probably. I'd only seen it once in probably 1984. I probably, but of course, I had seen the rest of the movie in meme form. Okay? I've probably seen this once or twice all the way through, but yeah. I've probably seen bits and pieces of this a bunch because I used to work at a video store, and I had pe- co-workers that loved this movie that would just play it. Because well, okay. we would play movies while we watched, so I would see it over and over again. But I didn't really sit all the way through because I'm helping yeah. customers and shit. But so I'm very familiar with the film, very familiar okay. with the soundtrack. Um, I knew every song in this except for like one, which I did not remember. Yeah, most of the yeah, it's all and there's this soundtrack was fucking huge. Yeah, and and obviously this is um, other than Beat Street and Breaking. This is a big, bigger budget. Yes. It is the most polished of the films of um, well of the of the three of the three, of the three films. Yeah, it's yes, the most yes. polished film for sure. The Streets of Fire and Moscow, Moscow and Hudson are both actually oh, yeah. probably more polished. Than yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. But this is really polished and it's very uh, glitzy. Herbert Ross, who was a chore, he had something to do with dance. I know that he, I don't know if he was a choreographer or something, but he is he's not unfamiliar with dancing and music. I'm I'm gonna he's not I'm gonna tell you with I'm gonna tell you something that, I'm gonna t- I'm gonna tell you something that's gonna give you a half a uh, whole full star rating uh, uh, off this movie though Herbert Ross directed Play It Again Sam just to let you know so this is the director of Play It Again Sam yeah but Play It Again Sam <laughs> was written by, by Woody, Woody Allen yeah, yeah, yeah. okay but anyways it wasn't badly directed right, right, right. except for it was bad in every way yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> So Herbert Ross did play. Oh, you're right. This movie's a negative four star. <laughs> <laughs> so Footloose, I, the poster's great. It was a great uh, art painting of Kevin Bacon just getting into his dance with his headphones yes. on. 1984 headphones. Oh, my God, which yeah. Which I'm sure they sounded awesome. <laughs> so Kevin Bacon plays Ren, and he's a city kid who goes to this small town. Yeah, his which, mom's there. which state is this in? They didn't really they say it. It's the because there's a bunch of cowboy hats involved. Let's I don't see think if we can. It says mention. Beaumont, but it doesn't say yeah, where it's, it's at, It's in the right? south. Just a small town. Yeah. Okay. Here's the weird thing. It's really weird about this movie. It's obviously deep-ish mm-hmm. south because mm-hmm. there's a lot of cowboy hats, 
but there ain't no people of color in this entire town. Oh, not this is, one. This takes place in an alternate universe where the Nazis full blown won. Okay. <laughs> That's the only thing I come up with. So he's, no Jewish people, no black people, no Mexicans. They live like an hour away from the Mexican border. No Mexicans. Okay. <laughs> so they, <laughs> um, he's in this small town. You know, I don't know if he was necessarily a bad kid or anything like that, but you know, he's. I don't think he was. No, his dad like abandoned him or died. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I, don't, yeah. I can't remember. But he gets in the small town. You know, trying to fit in. He likes to dance. He's a dancer. I mean, it's funny. There's only like three dance scenes in the whole movie. Yeah, they're long. Well, the opening only... credits have a weird dance scene. I think they oh. actually have at least they're all feet, which I think it's was just feet probably, during Footloose. That so was like yeah, an yeah. added thing because they said, "Oh yeah, oh yeah." By the way, uh, well, I wonder if this movie was even called Footloose, or they said, "Oh shit, we got this fucking amazing." They only played the song five times. In the yeah, song, five times we have in the this movie, awesome yeah. song. Let's call this movie that song, and then just play that song over and over. And I'm right. like, I'm not going to complain. I love Footloose. Yeah, 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 okay. yeah. The <laughs> opening credits is just like feet dancing during Footloose, or the song Footloose. That's it. Anyways, Kevin Bacon is trying to fit in, and he meets. Laurie Singer, who's the preacher's daughter, played by John Lithgow, who's actually really good in the oh, movie. Oh, Lithgow is fucking mind blowing. He's he's movie. really good. If, well, I'm a big John Lithgow if, fan. This movie made anyways. Lithgow and Kevin Bacon household names. Oh, Kevin Bacon's really good in the movie too. Yeah, right? I know. Yeah, he's but really they, good. this movie broke them both out. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then they both went on to be phenomenal actors. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and Lithgow already, at, at least for me, was already pretty. He was pretty known. He was already nominated twice for Academy Awards at this be, point. At, before this, yeah. Oh, was he? He was nominated for Best Supporting Actor in World According to Garp and Best Supporting Actor in Terms of Endearment. Oh, okay. And so he's already but those in. are not and blockbuster then, movies. And then he was also the villain in two Brian De Palma movies. In 1976, he was in Obsession. How old was he in this fucking movie? I don't know. He was like 39. He, he's still around. 39. He's got to be 904 years old now. Okay? And then he was also the bad guy in Brian De Palma's Blowout, which were one of my favorite movies. This is a really good it's movie. A guy, it's a Palma, of course. You're yeah, right. yeah. I love De Palma. Yeah, you're so anyway, so John Lithgow kind of he kind of dis- <laughs> discovered him for the- theatrical. Okay. Anyways, but I do believe that this is probably the movie that people. Yeah, first I think saw so. I think so. Like the, the mainstream public. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was the seventh highest grossing film in '84. Yeah, it was. World huge. According Garp was the 800th. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. And, well, Terms of Endearment was pretty big. <laughs> yeah, I guess Terms of Endearment. That one best picture. Yeah. John Lithgow has. You know, there was a death that happened, inclu- like that involved his son. Yeah. Like yeah. a car accident. It was drunk a car driving accident on some bridge. But he <laughs> correlates to like dancing is bad and the devil and da da da. Yeah, he goes all in on that stuff. His Weird fire and brimstone speeches or sermons are pretty. That's what he starts off. It's the first thing you see, and I'm movie, like, yeah. oh, he's really good in this movie. And we all know because we've been watching him for forty yeah, yeah, fucking yeah. years, fifty yeah. years. That's not him. He's just good at being an actor. What a what amazing surprise! Yeah, he's yeah, yeah. world class actor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's really good. Even the bad guy in Cliffhanger. He's in there. anyways. Oh, God, that's right. <laughs> it's so good. Cliffhanger is so weird. It's it's great. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. then you make the mistake of thinking. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's exactly what that movie. Anyway, so Footloose. Kevin Bacon is trying to you know he, trying to fit in. He he kind of forms a relationship with Laurie Singer, who's with this real douchebag redneck guy, of course. Yeah. And so there's well, conflicts all in there. Redneck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Although his best friend in this, Chris the Penn, way, the way they the way they meet. They start off, they look like they're going to be villains. No, they're best friends by the end of the scene. Yeah, yeah, awesome. yeah. I yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually really Chris like Penn, that um, who went on to be Nice Guy Eddie in Reservoir Dogs. So yeah. was, every time I'm looking at him, I'm just like, Larry, stop pointing the fucking gun at my dad every time. But anyways. Stop watching Reservoir Dogs, okay? <laughs> so Chris, Chris Penn, and he's like super thin and young in this. And, um, yeah, they all are. Yeah, well, Except Kevin Bacon. Lithgow. Lithgow is like 40. Right, right, right. <laughs> so they end up uh, becoming friends. Um, he's trying to get the town to kind of want to dance, and it, it kind of ends with like they want to do this big prom at the end of it. Of course, John Lithgow. The whole—I mean, it is literally illegal to dance in the town. They made it. They passed public, a law. Public dancing. Public you can dancing. dance at home. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. guess. Okay. So, just so <laughs> the Nazis didn't fully win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. What's behind closed doors? You know, like that, all right? But so the, the, it all leads to this big thing, and there's a great speech that Kevin. Bacon gives, you know, and he like quotes the Bible about dancing and stuff at this big yes, town meeting. That and is stuff. The, the, here's the thing. I had seen this, but I remembered that that scene yeah, happened. Yeah. I thought it had. I thought when they were planning this dance, I'm like, oh, they got caught in the dance and yeah, there's yeah, a yeah. trial. No, this is him asking like yeah. the, the people to change the law. He doesn't win that. No. Yet for somehow they pass. Well, Lithgow, Lithgow, Lithgow does it. changes it. I'm like, is he the is he the mayor? No, he pretty How does much he have magic power. I feel like that he's got a lot of pull. In he that seems town. to have like, a ton of pull. A ton of pull Here's the thing: he's, he's technically the villain, but in actuality, they post in what's her face's ex boyfriend as the villain, and yeah. it's just a fight. I'm like, okay, 
they they needed a real villain, a guy that he could defeat with fists later. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. This yeah. guy, he warms up. Although he it kind of it kind of is a sudden turn. It is, <laughs> and then uh, Diane Weist is really good as as uh, oh, yeah. wife. She's uh, really I, good. I'm a big fan of hers. Anyways, uh, she's really good. One thing I want to mention though, Laurie Singer, who plays the lead, she is so she plays uh, John. Lithgow's daughter. Daughter, yeah. They're 12 years apart. Really? In real life. Well, I, it's, it's, a hot, it's a movie. <laughs> She's 39. She's 27. That's She's 27. She does movie. look young. She it, also needs to eat a fucking hamburger because she's so fucking But he was like okay. 25, 26, 27 yeah, yeah. as well. Oh, yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they, they all are. Yeah. I mean, there might be one they're walking around in the school. There's a few teenagers that literally, they grab from the So he plays teenagers. a high schooler. Literally six years ago, he plays a college freshman in Animal House. Six years earlier? Yeah. Kevin Bacon is a is a college it's, freshman it's in Animal it's House. Fine. Six years earlier than this, but well, now he's six Tom years. Tom Holland is still playing Peter Parker, yeah. and he's like thirty. Okay, <laughs> so I like this movie. This is this is another movie that's kind of like it's, critic proof. I mean, you can find shit to shit on about it, but all the acting's good. It's it's, it's a very much the dancing stuff. It's of the time. Yeah, the yeah. dancing stuff is just one of the plots in it. There's oh. actually still he like gets in this weird chicken chase down thing yeah. and all that stuff, and I'm like. Oh, yeah, well, it's like a rebel scene. without a cause. It doesn't make rebel, sense. Okay. It's a lot of rebel without a cause kind yeah, of like yeah. Yeah. plot going on and, in but the movie. It, but this is one of those movies where it's hard to even talk about it because you're like, we all know everything about this movie. Yeah, it's every fine. single aspect of this movie, we all know it. And okay. every and every criticism that you come up with, it's like, well, it's footloose. It's footloose. It's, footloose. Also, it's like, come and on, you wait two minutes, and then even though they're not supposed to dance. They're going to p- put on a boombox at the local restaurant, and the whole fucking town breaks out to dance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Except for this guy who shows up and turns it off. <laughs> I it's, really um, liked... Everybody loved oh, that song, Oh, Sarah Jessica jerk. Parker is in there as well as uh, Chris Penn's girlfriend or whatever. That's Sarah Jessica Parker. That is her. That was oh, her. wow. Holy yeah, shit. Yeah. She was the one who was sad that she couldn't dance in the club. Yes. That's that apparently they got fake IDs for, even though they're all in their mid-20s. <laughs> <laughs> I think Chris Penn was legit a teenager in that movie. Was he? Okay. I think maybe. other than that, though. Sarah Jessica Marker might have been, too. She looks Ooh, really good. Maybe, yeah. But yeah, Kevin Bacon's good. I love the da- <laughs> dancing when, you know, when he's at his work or whatever, the, the mill, whatever it is, warehouse place that he yes at. that is the that's the most meme scene and then his and then his, his weird that was the his weird stunt thing. double just does all the dancing like because yeah you know, it's all that was the weirdest scene watching this movie because i had not seen it in a while yeah. i'm like uh i don't know this song i know this scene all oh, right i have no recollection of this and song then him because like other people have added their own yeah. song to that over the last 40 fucking years and, and then he's like, doing oh, all the gymnastic the shit and he's like yes grabs the chain and he's swinging yeah, i'm like yes I'm like, that's i can't that's quote unquote dancing i can't help but just smile and chuckle during that whole scene. It's oh, yes. fun. It's, it's fun. It's 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 a fun scene, mostly because in the dancing in that is weirdly as much as I'm shitting on it, it's like yeah. not dancing. It's as much dancing as actual teenager would do. Yeah. The end of the movie, suddenly they're the best dancers in the fucking universe. Everything... And they literally weren't allowed to dance until now. Yeah. <laughs> Every oh, and they're so good. I'm like, good. I am the best robot dancer. Oh, they had to break yeah, they throw a break dancer in there and I'm like <laughs> Okay, I'm like, the okay. movie. This movie is super artificial. I mean, yes. it, it is. It's a teen drama movie that happens to have some dancing. Okay, <laughs> but it's super artificial. Nothing in it. You you go like that's. Oh yeah, that's like in real life. None yes. of it. None of it. But uh, this movie. But no, it's fun. It's fun movie. It I would compare it to like phenomenal dirty, soundtrack. Do you like Dirty Dancing? I, mean, I, I think I've seen Dirty Dance like maybe one half so, time. So I, I like Dirty Dancing too, but I would compare this to Dirty Dancing because Dirty, like you watch Dirty Dancing, nothing, not but, one scene in that movie is genuine, and that's kind of how I feel about this movie. But I can't help but like the movie. It's fun. It's it's it has an energy to it. It's it's well crafted. It, it's it's a well it has made some good movie. acting. It has it has solid acting. Oh, that's right. The I'm going to tell you what the best actor in this movie is. Though. Okay, and it happens at like the halfway point. Okay, there's a point where they're back in the church. Mm-hmm. And this guy was doing his rig of a roll, and there's a kid who fell asleep in the church. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and his dad wakes him up, and the kid is like the most most accurate representation of a kid who just woke up and he just goes back to sleep. He I'm probably like, holy was... shit, that kid was fucking amazing. He was probably sleeping. He might have been really? sleeping. Oh, yeah, I hope yeah, yeah. he. I I hope. Here's the thing that I'm just gonna call it awesome method. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> he was full method. <laughs> no, but he didn't look at the camera. 
Yeah. No. If you were actually asleep and it actually happens, the first thing you fucking look at is the camera. I was like, well, where, where, where am I? Yeah. <laughs> I think he was faking it. I think he was just really fucking good at it. He was a it, okay? great, what a great That kid, kid was awesome. No, no, I like, I, I think I think it's just good. There's not much more I could say about well, it. You want like, the, I don't even good. remember what I just gave it. Did I give it a star? No, I give it okay. three stars. <laughs> three stars, it's fun. I, I mean, I like it. It's, it's, a, it's good, a solid. It's a fun movie. It has some of the same problems. The music's amazing. The actual movie itself is, it's, it's better than the other ones. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's just well, not, and let's go and stuff like, elevated up. Yeah, like, oh, that's yeah he's good. Bad. Yeah, there's like good it. acting. I hate saying two and a half again. You can do two and a half. It's fine. No, I, I, I think Footloose is fine. Because I was going to start a new movie. rating system for myself to Ooh. a mild degree. Okay, <laughs> and if I hated a movie, I was going to say that I give that movie prognosis negative oh. and then prognosis positive. <laughs> I can't do it for any of the movies that I. Yeah. I mean, I guess I gave. Moscow of three. Yeah. Or whatever. Okay. So the <laughs> next, last movie was is Breakin'. Breakin', not Breakin' 2. Electric Boogaloo. No. Yes. Although one of the characters, not characters, one of the characters is played by a guy who has a Boogaloo nickname Shrimp. Boogaloo. Boogaloo Shrimp. Yeah, which is, I guess, where they got the name. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Breakin', the uh, breakdancing movie. So interesting thing about this movie, this is, is can- it? What? Like I said, there's like two breakdance scenes in this movie, okay? So <laughs> it's, it's uh, it actually came out a, like a week or two before Beat Street came out. Okay. Because or it crushed Beat Street. Because, because watching this movie is yes. fun. Okay? Because, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Beat Street's not unfun. It just isn't. Yeah, this, this movie is fun. <laughs> Canon Pictures. They made a bunch of, like all the ninja movies and. Oh, this and, is a Canon movie. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. This is the best canon movie yeah. I've seen so, so far. They, so they, you know, they, Wait. they made Masters of the Universe. They did. I, I've uh, seen Life Force and Life Force. Like, it, well, yeah, that was a legit. Like, yeah, Life Force is movie. good. It bombed so, like fucking nothing right. else, but it's fucking great. But this movie, <laughs> this movie made way more than Life Force. Although I'm pretty sure if I watch Life Force now, I'd hate it. So I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but um, they were kind of very exploitive uh, producers. Um, the canon guys. Yes. Go, going on Globus. They're trying to make money. They're they're not even good so at they money heard right. that Beat Street. Was being made, so they fast tracked this movie what? and beat it. Yes, you want to know why? Because this movie took a week and a half to make. Yeah, okay? so let's they get, went. Let's get some bunch of people who can well, dance literally better than I can dance, but not anywhere near as good as the people in Beat Street. Well, okay? literally, <laughs> at, literally after the movie was made, Breaking Two comes out literally five months later in the theater. Like it came out the yeah, same oh yeah, year. Yeah. It even the it same references year. it in this. At by the, the way, credits. sequel coming. Yeah, How do we know? Ice T told us. Okay. It's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Ice T's in this movie. So right. is some other people. So in this movie, uh, <laughs> Lucinda Dickey plays um, a dancer. You only know her name because it says right on that screen. You would never no, fucking remember that. Name. I, I remember Lucinda. I don't remember. Does her last she name. ever do anything after this? Ninja Three. That doesn't count as doing anything. It's canon pictures <laughs> and break into. No, anyways. So she plays Kelly, who becomes Special K. But, oh uh, yes, I'm oh, sorry, we didn't reference that. There's an act, her character is Special K. There's a person whose actual stage name in the credits of Beat Street is Special, Special K. K. Yeah, it's another link. It is Austin. Another link. We're full of movie links. They probably found out like, oh, let's put that in our movie first. I don't, maybe <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't put it past them. No, Anyways, her, her name is the lamest yeah, yeah, yeah. of the three. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, but she's like a like professional dancer, kind of ballet professional type Broadway stuff, right? And you know, they practice and. You know, a studio, and everyone's wearing their leotards and stuff. And she's got a friend. God, what's the guy's name? But he was awesome. I really liked him. Uh, which friend was him? Which the one? black guy? There was the, the gay black guy. The tall. Oh yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. That's right. A whole other character who doesn't. He does he dance in this movie? He dances like her. Like the yeah. He's like, he's the, like the, a classically trained dancer. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's right. And he's like, hey, we gotta go to the uh, Venice Beach wait, and go wait, check wait, out wait. these things. That but, guy was gay. <laughs> <laughs> That dude was so funny. <laughs> that guy the was gaydar. That guy, my gaydar, was like awesome. Yeah, yeah. All the gaydar. No, he was awesome. Oh, he was. He might actually be the funnest thing. No, he was super fun. No, there's a lot of fun. No, there's so fun. So, oh yeah. So they go to Venice Beach and they are watching dancers, and two of them are friends with the with um the gay black guy. I think you could just say friend. Friend. Gay black dude. Actually, I don't know his name. You're right. I know. I know. I have no idea. Let's see here. Uh, those are the main three. Adam, it's Adam, Adam, Adam. Yeah, it was Adam. Yeah, he doesn't have okay. a Wikipedia page. Surprise. <laughs> <laughs> so, even though I think he was pretty good in this movie. Yeah, Adam whatever. was great. So Adam, uh, and I can't remember if he was in two or not. Anyways, Adam, uh, so he's friends with these guys. It's Ozone and Turbo. They're like, so there, there's like a five minute scene of them like break dancing. And in the background, I had to point out to Tim that one of the extras is Jean-Claude Van Damme 
in like any, the first real street dance. And street he dance is thing. literally in oh, every shot, and he's like, reacting and dancing reacting. to everything. He's like a third character. He that? is. He is. He's like a third character. <laughs> but you know, if you don't notice it, you might not. But as soon as I, if you if you notice it, you're not going to oh, unsee you can't, it. Uh, you, you're only looking at him. Yeah, so, there's dancing going on. But there's JCBD right there. Yeah, is right there as an expert. And this was two years before he did No Retreat, No Surrender. His dancing involved slapping. Yeah. Just clapping his and hands. And it did. A, and it was. Uh, in this movie. And then it was uh, four years before he did Bloodsport. So he was right on the cusp. He was on the cusp of being the man we all know and love. Yeah. I mean, that man. mediocre actor. Yeah, who kind of made it okay. Some yeah. of them kind of okay. Oh, movies. I, 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 I kind of uh, like some of those. I hope. Like, kind of. Maybe we can all oh, go back in time, watch oh, a couple well, of those. Let's do it. We're going to be. We will. So, anyways. Um, but she's dancing in this in this hoity-toity place, and this the his her instructor is a real piece of dog shit. Yes, oh, he's terrible. He is a real piece of shit. He has a crush on her. He's the villain he, of he, the movie. He attempts to rape her. Although at one we all point. kind of assume because there's another character in this movie that we all just assume is going to be the villain. He's not. He's not. Christopher he's Donald. Not, you, Shooter we, McGavin. Shooter McGavin. Because because of Shooter McGavin, we would just assume, oh, he's going to turn. What I kept waiting guy. for him to be, but then, so he's the guy he's, that he's actually he's just he the plays agent an he's agent. Fine. He's a plays he plays an agent that comes yeah. to help Kelly, and you kept on waiting for him because he is like, oh, he, look, he's clearly interested in her. Well, who is it? She's fucking hot as balls. But <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> he's clearly interested. You know, but he seems to accept whatever she does. Like, he's not, like, forcing yes. himself on her. Yes. She, which is nice. She just basically shows him her friends that can street dance, and he goes, okay, now I'm going to be all your agents. Okay? Yeah. yeah. Even though I'm like, they, weren't, they were okay. <laughs> okay. But I like <laughs> you. Go, but yeah. you go, to, go to the random street, and you're going to see people just as good as they are. Yeah, okay? yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and then... The little kid was awesome. Oh there's yeah, a, there's, there's a, a little kid, kid in this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's fucking awesome. He's really good. Actually, he's, actually, he's oh, okay. like I'm spinning sorry, on his you, head. You do your thing. I have. A yeah, thing yeah. He's spinning on his head and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That kid so, was awesome. and then what they do is so it, it it leads up to a big audition to see if they can get this like part to be in the street musical or whatever. The main rival is her old instructor, who is you know. And he's like, you guys aren't dancers. You guys are street trash, you know. And so it just boils down to that. And then there's a big yeah. pr- production at the end of the movie. That's pretty much it. So, and then there's like subplots, you know, there's like a little love triangle because Ozone obviously likes Kelly, but they don't really consummate the romance or anything. No, not really. Part two, though. <laughs> sure. Spoiler alert. Um, oh, no, you're explaining the plot part, to Electric two. Boogaloo. What am I going to do? So, no, <laughs> I think the actors in this movie, there are, you know they're amateurish actors, but they have a charm to them. They they have they have a certain charm to them. I think Lucinda Dickey's fun because they uh, just they're there. They're like they're waiting for their next the thing. Guy, Shabadoo, okay, who plays like, Ozone, is I think he's good. Here's the thing. Yeah. You, once again, using the royal we. Yeah. Okay. I'm yeah. gonna say we timed how much time oh. in this movie there wasn't dancing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why he had your stopwatch out. <laughs> That's correct. Uh, where did I put it? It's right here. I think it is. This is 39 minutes of this movie has no dancing, which oh, means wow. in a movie that's like an hour and 28 minutes yeah. long is significantly more dancing than not dancing. Yeah. Okay? But a lot of it's not break dancing. A lot of it is. No. Is... Well, some of it is the, the first dance you see is like her. Yeah. Like choreographed, like yeah, whatever, yeah, yeah. street, not street, but yep. classical dancing. Yep. I, um, yeah. I think the dancing's fun in the movie, um, even break, whether it's break dancing or not. Ozone is, is fun to watch. Turbo is the better dancer. Like, he's awesome. He is. In the movie. And I think very possibly the best dance sequence is he goes outside to, like, sweep. I was just about to say that. And he does, yep. like, this awesome thing. With his broom. With, with his broom. He's and dancing he makes with the broom. broom dance. And as long as you keep your eyes closed, you can't see the wires. You can't see the wires. You can't see the wires. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. See the wires. There's one shot if, I did. If Only if one shot I saw. It, yeah, but... you, by that one, you mean you could, they're like hooked to his hands. Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's way too close up, you idiots. But, but whatever. But yeah, he it's, does, still like, it's still by far he does this minute, the best actual dance. Yeah, he does the, it's like a minute, minute and a half of yeah. him dancing just by himself with a broom. And very similar. Uh, Although and, that's because his friend said, told Fred him, sent him, sent, sent him outside to sweep the outside. I'm right. like, what's going on? But then, okay. but, but then he says, but <laughs> then he's. sweep outside? And Outside's this, not where you go sweeping. And this is a <laughs> reference to, uh, uh, at least for me, because I'm a big film geek, 
right before that, he's like, who do you think you are, Fred Astaire? And he goes, who? Fred Astaire literally dances with, like, a, I, a coat rack. Thank you. In Royal Wedding. Thank you for acting like I don't know who no, right, right, Fred right. Astaire is. No, but, but, but that's the reference. <laughs> yes. And then right yes. away, he proceeded yes. to do what Fred Astaire does. Yes. In the oh, oh, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I thought that was really cool. I, I really like that so, scene. So what you're saying is the canon of the film. Yeah. Uh-huh, boom, boom, boom. Meta! Pictures, yeah. The canon of the film is... He only said that to act like he didn't know Fred Astaire but he knows everything about Fred Astaire. He must he have, loves yeah, him. yeah. He loves that skinny bastard. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> and all the like the drama stuff because they shoe and horn drama in here like they did in Beach Street, but it was cheesier. It's cheesier, and you're but like, you're laughing at it, and, and it's also, fun. You don't have to wait as long. It's like oh yeah. no, I have to wait two minutes till more well, Beach Street happens. <laughs> yeah, Beach Street was like twenty five minutes longer than this movie. It's and, longer and, than and, this, yeah, yeah, yeah. and there is significantly. There's still dancing in it. There's still a heavy amount. Yeah, yeah. But like I said, this movie is like 50 minutes dancing. Yeah. I think Beat Street is probably like 25 minutes yeah. dancing. Okay. Yeah. And then there's the other stuff, and you're like, boy, I can't wait for the dancing to start. <laughs> right. And then the the finale when they're dancing, and then they, and then they have that thing where they they all jump into the camera, and then it freeze frames, and it goes break in. I'm like, fuck yeah. yeah and then. That. That Ice T's rapping in the background. Yeah, and yeah, he yeah. Mentions be the back sequel. for part two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, Electric oh movie. yeah, let's watch it. No, wait, that's not. <laughs> it's not out yet because we're traveling through. That's time right. Time. It was not out yet. That would have been a good double feature. Um, no, that I would have been if we had gone to the right, the right drive-in. We could have seen one and two oh, at the same I time. I wonder. I would have to. Well, no, because well, Breaking Two came out in December, so I don't know if there was. But it was somebody, drive-in, some but... drive-in said we're going to put both of them because you're going to be. Oh, I guess in California, when they when they could actually. Have them in December. Oh, because we're, we're in Minneapolis. That's yeah. why they're oh, closed. Oh, that's what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, anyways, uh, we have to. That might could have happened next year. Yeah, oh. right. But yeah, I think the the dialogue's fun. It's it's cheesy. Like I smiled through the whole movie. Like I like. Oh yeah, it. I enjoyed I'm, the it's, shit. Out it's of three it. stars for me. And I, I sat there and I really liked the I soundtrack. I... Two and a half. <laughs> Give it another movie. Two and a half. But weirdly, a high two and a half. I, it's a three. I love this movie. It's it's so much fun. It's fun. It's a comfort it's a movie. It's a comfort it's movie. I, I throw fun. it on, and and uh, the soundtrack's great. I have the soundtrack on vinyl. Prognosis. And I didn't middling. Okay. And, I, and I and I didn't <laughs> mention that um, for Streets of Fire, I also have the soundtrack on vinyl, which I showed you right before we recorded. Yes. Well, yeah, I have, but I do have the break in on soundtrack on vinyl too. I mean, I I, I just like collect soundtracks on vinyl, so I, I would yeah, I would even get Beat Street, um, because the music was good in it. So. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I don't have Footloose on vinyl, which I need to get. Okay, whatever. Footloose. <laughs> I mean, it's it's it was so huge you can literally just turn on the radio. You might hear it. In the okay. <laughs> but yeah, no, Breaking. I, yeah, Breaking's just a fun movie. I think, uh, and and you haven't seen Breaking too, but that one I didn't see that. So I saw Breaking as a kid. Uh, we rented it at the video store. Breaking two, I never saw until like literally like a year or two ago. I watched it. That's weird because and I think most people now, if they were gonna rent one of them, they'd just go to two because two. it's the meme one. It's got the name. It's <laughs> way more ridiculous There's, than this movie. It is I'm, what? It is really I mean, ridiculous. I guess this movie is. It just has dancing. The actual storylines are kind of standard. Yeah, <laughs> it is Wait, funny. It's is laugh Sh- out loud. Is Shooter McGavin in it? No, what I the don't fuck that garbage. I think so? No, I don't think he's in it. <laughs> Holy shit. Why have no. I why okay. We are at Austin's house right now. Yeah. He has a bunch of movie posters. Why don't you have that fucking movie poster? <laughs> Break that it fucking too? giant shoe with is, people dancing on it. It is really good. <laughs> it's so fucking, yeah. You got that fucking cool as ice piece of shit up there. So I got that as a gift, as a joke. As a, I've never even seen it. I have a vanilla ice, cool ice poster. At some point, we're going to travel to 1982, 1992. 93, yeah. I think. Or is, it might be two. Yeah, you right. might be. I don't know. Or 91. Actually, it might be 91. Maybe you, you, it was it was early 90s. That was when that song was the biggest song in the fucking world. Cool as ice. Yeah. What does the poster say on that? It is like, when a girl has a heart of stone, just add ice. It's you and your like, fucking eyeglasses. So I can't bad. read that shit. Too far Anyways. Away. Well, I, I can't read it either. I, I just don't you know what just it says. remember it. Because you, <laughs> you live it. You live <laughs> that poster, Austin. Well, that's our that, that's the movie. So, Moscow on the Hudson, Streets Fire, Firestarter, B Street, Footloose, and Break-In. I didn't hate any of these movies. I didn't hate any of them, and uh, well, Moscow and Hudson is so it just it's weirdly both yeah. the best movie and the most disappointing oh, movie. Right, movie. Right. I'm so, like, God, this movie could have been so football could have been one of my favorite right. viewing experiences. So, best movie for you is it's Moscow. Still Hudson. Moscow. <laughs> so, but of course, my it's Streets of Fire. Is, oh, Streets of Fire, the one that you get four stars. Weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's the best movie. Um, so this is so best performance acting acting lead actor. Lead actor. I'm gonna is, give, I'm is, gonna give it to Ron Williams. 
you're not going to say, I'm assuming you're not going to count, let me count Willem. A supporting I, actor. I, we'll do supporting. Okay. We'll do supporting. We'll see. We'll but see. Moscow and Hudson is, is. And Lithgow, you're not, you're not going to give him lead, even though he's literally the first That's guy supporting. you see. That's he's supporting. like literally the first guy you see. Okay, but he isn't literally. He's, he's he isn't character. the lead. You're right. But Moscow best Hudson is lead actor. actor. That would be the best. It probably is Robert. Robert Williams. He's probably, really good in the he's movie. Really good. And I would have nominated him too. I think he's yeah. Really, I'm, really I'm good amazed in the movie. just because even if it was just that one tub scene. Yeah. It's like holy shit. Yeah. I mean, granted, it might be that he wasn't really acting. He was just like, I'm going to grope this hot chick. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so best lead actress. I mean, there isn't too much of a lead actress, but I would probably give it to Marie Kachita Alonso, although it's kind of supporting. Yeah, she's pretty but, supporting. But she's she really doesn't even good. Show up till the fucking half hour point. <laughs> but you know, she's is the lead, the female uh, lead, I guess. But other you realize, okay, really, okay. Drew Barry, I wouldn't give it to Drew Barrymore. You wouldn't? No, I didn't. I'm weirdly going to say because she was like seven, and she, she there's a couple of times in the movie where I'm sometimes like, she was good, sometimes she wasn't though. Yeah, yeah, I know. But just because I'm going to be a nice person. To a little girl. <laughs> and she is like, of all the movies in here, there's only really two with actual lead actresses. Yeah. That would be her and Breakin. Okay? And I'm not giving it to Breakin. Oh, Lucinda Dick. She's yeah, okay. She's, she's charming. She's charming. I don't know if it's a good performance. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, so, actually, uh, well, actually, no, what's her face? Is the lead the girlfriend in Footloose? Kind of. It's kind of but supporting, also, too. Weirdly, Laurie Singer. Yeah, I'm going to have to give... Drew is okay. the star of that fucking movie. Yeah. And I'm yeah. not going to say that she should have been nominated or anything. No. Yeah, sure. But I'm surprised watching it. I'm like, she's like seven. She's surprisingly not as terrible, I would assume. <laughs> supporting actor. This is really good. So for me, it's George C. Scott. Oh, for it's, Fire it's like Let's go for you. It's between the two. I mean, I don't... But I, I'm going to give it to George I C. Scott. I thought George C. Scott was great. I just... Didn't understand any motivation. Yeah, 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 okay? yeah. But I would give it no. I do kind of weirdly. But let's go is good. Let's go is good. Zero religion in me. I have. I understand his motivation more. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. No, let's go is a really good choice because I would. I would probably would have picked him too if it wasn't for yeah. Jersey Scott. And then supporting actress, I would. So for me, this is going to be different than what you would give. I would give it. I'm going to give it to Amy Madigan in Streets of Fire because oh, well, I really. It's Maria. It's, it's Conchita Alonso. Oh, right, right, right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah she's really good in the she's movie. Really she's great, she's great really good. She's really good at Yeah. And I, I actually gave a shit about her character, and I did not give one red shit about what's-her-face. Okay? Oh, <laughs> like, oh, I just thought it was a fun... I remember she was on the screen, I'm like, can we not have her? Oh, wait, then I have to watch somebody else. Can we just not watch this movie anymore? <laughs> oh, wait, music's gonna start. I'll well, Streets of Fire cool would win everything else. Like, it's really pretty. I think, it's so fucking pretty. Like, I gave like all, cinematography, I, art direction. I gave all these movies, like, two and a half, and I gave... Moscow, uh, maybe I gave three. It, you gave it a three. I, well, I may have given Streets a two. I gave something a two. So you gave um, Beach Street a two. Beach Street a was two. Was that what it was? I yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember. You're going to edit this later and you're going to know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do. But, I so, yeah, no. I don't the, think about the star ratings like maybe you do. No. I just wait until I'm here and I'm like, oh, yeah. I, have to, I, I guess have it's to that. Yeah, I, yeah, I have yeah, to yeah. beat this now. <laughs> so, yeah, but yeah, Streets of Fire for me, it's, it's, it's a movie that it does have a cult status now, but it was a movie that it totally flopped when it came out. Yeah, I had huge, never heard of it. Huge flop. Or at least if I had, I had no recollection of her. And it was just, I, I remember watching it on Cisco and Ebert, and I think they gave it like, well, at the time they weren't doing thumbs up and thumbs down. They were doing yeses and noes. They was, had they hadn't come up with their, their no it was it wasn't at, it wasn't it wasn't even called Cisco and Ebert yet it was just called sneak, at the movies it was no it was before that it was sneak preview wait 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 there's a thing before at the movies sneak previews you're a fucking yeah you should still it was be on a, PBS you should still be a virgin okay, <laughs> what the fuck? it was yeah PBS but yeah so th- that's that was the that was the episode good job that was a I that was a fun one it's it's it is good I'm not like I was I I never screamed well two and a half. All across the board is not terrible. Yeah, it's, it's fine. fine. It's fine. I mean, the, even the ones I shit on, I'm like, yeah, it's like the good parts are so fucking good. It's really <laughs> but yeah, so the surprise for me, though, is the find was, because um, I've seen Streets of Fire before, but Moscow on the Hudson is really good. Oh, yeah, it's like, it's really good. It's a, it's a, it's really it's a good. gem that's kind of been forgotten about, because it was critically acclaimed on, upon release. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was. It's just nobody saw it. But yeah, and, <laughs> and it's just, I, I feel like. I believe like, somebody, some people went to go see it thinking of Robin Williams or something, because he was like the lead. Yeah. Although, if they had ever seen Garp, maybe they would have realized, right. maybe, maybe he isn't going to crack jokes the entire time. I right. So, it's, it's a surprising <laughs> movie, because when you think of, like, oh, he's going to play a Russian, and he's going to defect, and it's going to be a fish out of water, it's going to be like Crocodile Dundee and silly, and, and it, it's yeah, not. I, I literally had zero idea yeah. going in, 
and then that opening scene, I'm like, oh, he defects. Okay, I figured it out. <laughs> He's not just a, happens to be a guy who yeah, yeah, yeah. is Russian and living in there, and it's some slapsticky comedy. You know immediately what that movie is from the first five minutes. I'm like, but yeah, no, that's. I, I highly recommend that people seek that one out because it's really good. Oh, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's really I don't good. think we're talking on the podcast anymore, although we, we ha- you haven't. Oh, this is the podcast. No, this is the podcast. Oh, we, 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 have to, we have to sign out. I th- oh, I'm sorry. We you are still, said, re- we you are still said recording. That catchphrase I wrote. Yeah, that's right. All right. Well, next time uh, we are actually next, Tim. We, we're actually going to go um uh back in time to 1966, I think June 18th, 1966. But yes. So I think that was next. You're the is. one who has them all. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right there. I can see it. June, June 18th, 1966. 1966. There it is. All right. Until uh the next podcast. I'm Austin Kennedy. That's not what the fucking catchphrase is. I say it I'm after Tim Kaiser. I said it. Yes. You said until the next podcast. That's a, a, kind of an ending. I'm Tim Kaiser. I'm Austin Kennedy. See you next, Tim. See you next, Tim. See? That totally makes no sense, but whatever. <laughs> Goodbye. See you next time. <laughs>